this morning. Give him your best praise. Hallelujah. Can you welcome somebody next to you? Just tell them you're welcome to my daddy's house. Hallelujah. I know we spent time praying to him, so this is your opportunity now to give him worship. Don't be distracted. Don't be thinking about what's happening after service. Focus on him for right now. He is in this place. And the Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures evermore. Father, we welcome you. As I come into your presence, I pass the gates of praise into your sanctuary till we're standing face to face. I look upon your countenance, I see the fullness of your grace, and I can only bow down and say that you are awesome in this place, mighty God, you are awesome in this place.
expectant in his presence this morning. You didn't just walk in to have a meeting. You came to meet with your maker. You came to meet with your Lord and Savior. Come on, lift up your hands and say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's an awesome God and we're going to give him praise. Tell your neighbor, say excuse me. Excuse me.
takes him by surprise. He knows every situation. And as his children, we've come to worship him because we believe that his word is true. We bless your name, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You're worthy of our worship this morning. You are holy. You are holy. There is no generations falling down in worship sing the song of friend to the Lamb and all who've gone before us and all who will believe sing the song of ages to the Lamb your name is the highest your name the greatest your name stands above them all all thrones and dominions all powers and positions your name stands above them all and the angels cry holy all creation cry
the Holy God, the Holy One of Israel, our Father, our Friend, our King, our Helper, the Lifter of our hands, the Lover of our souls. We join our voices with the, with the 24 elders as we sing, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord Almighty. Father, we cast our crown and we worship your great name. There is no one like you. You stand in a category of your own. You are beautiful for all situation. Your name is great and it is greatly to be praised. Father, we worship you. Be thou exalted ancient of days. Righteous judge, we celebrate you. In Jesus' name, we have worship. Come on, if you know that you have received help from the altar, I'm not just talking about local help, provincial help, global help, international help, judiciary help, federal help, institutional help. Come on, I need you to raise a shout of hallelujah. Yeah. you're seeing the 12th day of this 40 day journey come on give God a shout of praise for keeping you father we give you all the glory you are a good good father we exalt your name it's such a joy and a privilege to be called yours to be covenanted with you Thank you because you said your covenant, oh God, Father, you will not break. We give you all the glory, mighty God. In Jesus' name, we have worshipped. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much, PPV. Hallelujah. Good morning, house of praise. And to my family online, good morning from wherever in the world you're tuning from. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for being a part of this service. And for everyone in the room that have come from near and from far, you are welcome. Thank you for being a part of this service. This is the house of praise. Now, if you're joining us for the first time, I want to give you a warm welcome. Again, this is the house of praise. Praise. The House of Praise is a church that is committed to raising champions and to making a difference. Here at the House of Praise, we are a Bible-believing church. So everything that the Word of God says, we put our whole anchor on it, we believe it, and that settles it for us. So if you're here in person, once again, for the first time, or online, you are very welcome. Now, you're going to see QR codes that will pop up on both sides of the screen. And to my family online, if this is your first time, you will see see the, the link on, in the chat. I ask that you please scan the QR code, fill out the link so that a group of champions may meet with you after the service and tell you a lot more about the House of Praise. Now if you're new and you're in the building, um, to my right there's a door marked welcome center once you pass the double doors. They, again, there are a group of champions that are there in person as well to tell you a lot more about the House of Praise. Now the House of Praise is a very dynamic church. You know, we have different programs that cater to different gen to the two genders and that also cater to different age group. Now, one thing that is coming up in the month of May is the Balanced Living Women's Conference 2024. Hallelujah. Now, the Balanced Living Women's Conference 2024 is the largest free women's conference in Canada. Yes, you heard that right. It is the largest in Canada and it is free. Now, it is designed for all women from all ages. So whether you're a young lady or you're a senior lady, it is designed for you. Now, it's coming up, it's approaching very fast, starting from Thursday, May 23rd, all the way to Saturday, May 25th. There's a lot that has been packed specifically for the ladies and you don't have to be a member of the House of Praise or the Ignite Church to be a part of the Balanced Living Women's Conference. As long as you're a woman, 
it is for you. So my invitation today is that you will register for the Balanced Living Women's Conference 2024. Now it is completely free. And one of the goal of the Balanced Living Women's Conference is to evangelize, is to bring as many people, as many ladies to Jesus Christ. So for the first time in Balanced Living Women's Conference, we'll actually be evangelizing. Come on, is somebody excited? Yes, yes, we'll be evangelizing, we'll be going to the streets of the greater Toronto and Hamilton area to share about the Balanced Living Women's Conference and to invite as many women as possible. Now this initiative is called Light Up the City, which is coined from the theme of this conference titled Light, which is inspired from Psalm 36 verse 9. So this is my call to you to please register, we'll be going again to all of the greater Toronto and Hamilton area. So downtown, Hamilton, North York, Mississauga, Brampton, we're going there. We're going to be speaking about Jesus Christ and inviting as many ladies as possible to come to the Balanced Living Women's Conference. Now it's going to take place every sun, every Saturday in the month of May leading up to the conference. So the first day will be Saturday, May 4th. Then we'll also go in on May 11th and May 18th. So the call to action here is for you to sign up. Let's partner with Jesus even as we go out in this great commission. Yes, it is a commission. It's our responsibilities as Christians, as lovers of Jesus, to go out there and speak about the love of Christ to as many ladies as possible to have them come at Balanced Living Women's Conference. So please, let's not delay. Let's sign up today. Um, you can sign up on the app under the handle H all praise and the bible says that he that saves souls is wise and i trust that even as you obey this instruction prompted by the holy spirit you will increase in wisdom in the mighty name of jesus now, the other thing as well is, you know, this is a huge undertaking and we've acknowledged that it takes all hands on deck to bring this to a success. So this is my call to all the men in the house, whether you're a member of House of Praise or the Ignite Church. I know there's some of our global leaders watching the service as well. Please, please, if you're a man in the house, I encourage you to please sign up um, on the app as well. Again, it's not something that we can do by ourselves. We need all hands on deck to the glory of God to bring it to success. So you can sign up on the app or also there are info booths just outside in the lobby for you to sign up as well. Can I have the men shout a hallelujah? Hallelujah. Thank you so much even as you help us as you put your hand to the plow to see us women, you know, increase in light and enjoy life in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, here at the House of Praise, we are a multi-generational church. So this is my call. If you fall between the age of 17 to 30 and you're looking for what to do this afternoon, well, join us at the Ignite Church at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, both online and in person, even as we search the scriptures on how we can persevere in this season to lay hold on the promises of God to you and I. So I look forward to seeing you at the Ignite Church this afternoon at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now, please make sure that even as you're here in the service, it's not business as usual. Today is day 12 of our 40-day journey that we'll be waiting on God in the place of prayer, in the place of the word, so that we can increase in higher dimensions of dominion. So I ask that even as you're sitting in this service, have an expectation. The Bible tells us that the expectation of the righteous in Christ Jesus will not be cut short. And I look forward to hearing your testimony very soon in the mighty name of Jesus. So family, without further ado, let's join, join me as we welcome Pastor Chuma. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Is somebody hungry this morning? You didn't let me finish. I said, somebody hungry for the Lord. That's what I was going <laughs> Our God is good. Um. Permit me to say in line with uh, the announcement uh, that our precious sister just gave for Balanced Living, particularly to the gentleman, I feel like I have some sort of um, authority to speak to you. Um, with respect to the volunteerism, to be honest with you, our numbers are pretty low. I was told that so far, gentlemen have only 22 have registered and I know um, we probably just forgot. So. 
Uh, I'm not going to give the women's number because we don't compete in Christ. But as she said, we need, we, when we do programs in the house of praise, we do it all together. It's for the women, and when they are blessed, we are blessed, of course. So just encouraging you very pointedly, please don't put it off till tomorrow. Today, go on the app and register to be of help to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Testimonies, who's ready for some testimonies? Who is ready to hear good news of what God has done? I thought so. I'm going to get right into it. First testimony has no subject, because when, you re when I read it, uh, you realize it doesn't need one. This is a long testimony, but I've managed to summarize it. My wife and I moved to Canada from Nigeria in June 2023 and have been members of House of Praise since then. We experienced the favor of the Lord in every area from arriving to settling down. We had family and friends here who supported us every step of the way. However, one thing my wife and I struggled with was getting a job. Between July and November, we had both submitted over 500 job applications each. I was like, wow. We had attended job career fairs, job expos, but nothing worked. We just kept on getting rejection emails. For, for the few interviews we did get, we would go through first stage, second stage, and then radio silence from the recruiters. It was discouraging and worrisome at times, but we kept our faith alive. Prayed and thanked God for what we were certain he was going to do. We apply the principle of sending God's words and promises to him in a place of prayer. We held on to Jeremiah 29, 11 and Zechariah 4, 6 to 7. In November, we participated in the fast and our expectation was that God will answer us before the month ended. We were so certain of this, so much so that there was nothing anyone could have said to convince us otherwise. Toward the end of November, to the glory of God, I got an interview for a role in an organization that I really liked. After doing my research, I had multiple interviews. After my penultimate interview, I was asked to provide a date which suited me for the final interview, which I responded hurriedly to. Almost 48 hours after responding, I did not get a response or confirmation. The day before, Pastor prayed a prayer of nullifying and destroying every prince of Persia, delaying our testimony. My wife and I prayed this prayer again the next day. And then less than two hours after this prayer, the HR personnel contacted me and said, quote, my apologies, your emails have gone to my spam folder. So I completely missed your response yesterday. I got the job offer that I really wanted after the devil tried to stop it. <laughs> Hallelujah. A week after, barely an hour after my wife's final interview in Toronto for a job she really wanted, she received an offer on her way back to Mississauga. <laughs> that's right. That's right. On November 30th, remember, that, remember they said it should not pass the end of November for a job that she had prayed for. God really answered our prayers in November. We were astonished at how God did not even want it to enter December. Praise the Lord. God has been good to us. You know, when a season of prayer and fasting, can you just raise that, declare that for yourself, that Lord... Any delay that the enemy has introduced into my life, where my good news is sitting in an inbox, where the status is still saying processing, change it to approve in the name of Jesus. Speak for yourself. Come on. Father, we call upon your name. Anywhere where our good news is being restricted, is being frustrated, is being delayed, we speak. 
Let it come forth and enter our hands in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Testimony number two. The subject is, I have a very big God. I've explained to you the challenge I have with, um, with always having words and having, always putting them into music. I, I can't help this one. I have a very big God. A very big God. Oh. You can finish it. They are the ones saying it. Oh. <laughs> I have a very big Amen. Okay, settle down, settle down. You guys want to get me in trouble. Ah. <laughs> Greetings. PWA, PTA, and House of Praise members. My name is, and I stand before you today to share a miraculous testimony of God's faithfulness. We serve a God who will never leave nor forsake us. And I am a living testament to his unfailing love and protection. Recently, my family encountered a frightening ordeal involving our two-year-old daughter. What initially seemed like a routine morning quickly turned into a moment of crisis when my husband, in an effort to avoid a slippery staircase, inadvertently tripped while carrying our little one. Despite his precautions, our precious daughter, who was so full of energy and excitement that morning, fell from his arms as they both went down onto the icy ground. She bumped what looked like her head on the stairs as I watched helplessly. In the aftermath of the fall, the enemy tried to sow fear of her future in our hearts as my husband took her to the walking clinic. She was coherent but showed signs of distress, drowsiness and vomiting. We were advised to take her to the hospital if she kept vomiting at home, which she did prompting us to call the ambulance and we took her to emergency. As we waited anxiously for the doctor's assessment, I clung to the promises of God that I had fervently prayed over my daughter since her conception. Every promise over her life and future, as well as those I held on to while partaking in the joyful mother's sessions. My joy concerning my children shall not be cut short in Jesus' name. I held on to the verse in Psalm 119 verse 89, which says, Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. And other scriptures, such as Deuteronomy 31, 8, Romans 8, 31, Psalm 23, 4, became my anchor in the storm, reminding me of God's sovereignty and protection. Despite the enemy's attempts to instill doubt and fear, I held steadfast to my faith, trusting in God's divine intervention and true to his word. Within a mere four hours, our daughter's condition took a miraculous turn. Somebody say, turn around. From a state of drowsiness and uncertainty, she suddenly started singing, This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let, sing with her, come on, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. In the hospital bed, as we were waiting for the pediatric doctor to come check her out, she asked for food and I gave her a snack. Then she expressed boredom and a desire to walk around just as the doctor arrived, who was pleased to witness her improvement. After conducting their checks, they cleared her and my baby returned to her usual cheeky self. My husband is feeling much better. 
the tears that I did not share during the ordeal are now flowing as I write this but they are not tears of they but they are tears of joy and thanksgiving I want to encourage someone to hold on to this word found in 2 Peter 3 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Thank you, Jesus, and all glory to God. Somebody who is grateful, come on, rise up. Make sure you're putting those hands together to appreciate the King of glory. Thank you, Lord. Let's worship God as we receive Minister Eliezer.
magnify your name. Holy Spirit, we worship you. We reverence. You are holy, we worship you. You are holy, we worship you. You are holy, we worship you. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord. Be exalted, O God. mighty name we worship. Father, we've come before your presence today to say thank you. Thank you that we woke up this morning. And the testimonies we just heard right now, thank you. Thank you for frustrating the plans of the enemy. We give you the worship and the honor. Receive our praise today, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Perfected Priest. God bless you guys. Good morning, church. Good morning, everyone. Um, just in case you're joining us for the first time today, I know you've been welcome, but once again, let me lend my voice to that. You're very much welcome. We appreciate you being here. Every one of you that are here today, we appreciate you coming and being here today. We know you were prompted by the Holy Spirit, but obviously the exercise of your free will is all part of the equation. And you have decided, being prompted by the Holy Spirit to be here today. So we appreciate it when we say thank you for coming. And those joining us online, also our online family, thank you for being part of this service also in Jesus' name. The Holy Spirit that has brought to you surely wants you to have very high expectations concerning what he wants to do in your life today. You need to have very high expectations. Not just regular expectations, but what? High expectations. You see, every time we come into God's presence, it's important we come with high expectation that God is going to do something. That's part of the outworking of our faith. Once those expectations are no longer there over a sustained period of time, then it becomes religion. It becomes religion. Okay? We have to come in there because even the elders in heaven, the beasts in heaven, the, the, the four living creatures in heaven, the angels in heaven and all of their ranks, they are still discovering different dimensions of God. Every time God is manifesting. And you and I that are the zenith of God's creation, you know, uh, the crown, okay, crown jewel of his creation here on earth, we should also come with the expectation, knowing that there's going to be another dimension of God that his spirit will be revealing to us. Can I hear an amen? amen. Are you expectant? Yes. And particularly as you and I have been given grace by God to pay a price, a sacrifice of our flesh, in abstaining from food to seek the face of God. Just look straight. Even if you're not doing it, just look straight. <laughs> so you don't feel guilty. You know. <laughs> you know. All the more that we should be expectant in the name of Jesus Christ. Personally for me, my personal testimony is that this has been a blessed season in my life. It's been very, very refreshing for me spiritually. Very refreshing. I've been, by God's grace, I've been able to shut down distractions and be locked in like laser beam into God. And I'm finding things about God, knowing God more and more, pressing into God and finding things about God and I'm like, oh, really? I never knew that. I never knew that. I'm shocked. And because I've had the privilege of working with God for us for a few, just not too long, but for a few years, I know every time there's a fresh revelation of who God is, um, the way he works according to the scripture, is because you're going to see something you've not seen before. Because the revelation of God you have that he exposes you to is the manifestation you will see. You can never see manifestation beyond the revelation of God you have. Never. Never. It's the one you have. So once God starts revealing himself and revealing himself, it means something is about to happen that's never happened before. And for somebody today, it's going to mark a new beginning to a greater levels for you. I don't know what it is like for you right now, but I know you will celebrate at the end. 
I don't know what it's sounding like. I don't know what it's looking like. But you are going to celebrate at the end. <laughs> you are going to celebrate at the end. I, 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 I know and I pick in my spirit that you might have received some piece of news, you know, maybe during the week or along the last couple of weeks and maybe even yesterday that you didn't like. You felt this is contrary to what you are believing God for. Don't bother yourself about it. You were going to celebrate at the end. I'm just picking that to my spirit now and I'm telling you, you will celebrate at the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. The end of a matter is better than the beginning. The end of a matter is better than the beginning. On this authority of that word, you will celebrate at the end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody came into this service with a word concerning your children. The Holy Spirit is ministering to me. Let me let, let you know this. They will be mighty on the earth. You will not bring forth children for trouble. You will not bring forth children for trouble. They will be mighty on the earth. Great shall be the peace of your children. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will celebrate at the end. You will celebrate at the end. God doesn't usually follow step-by-step -step progress to turn things around. So if you're thinking to yourself, I have a deadline on Wednesday, oh my God, if things are going to happen, shouldn't it have been happening little by little? Sometimes God can do that, that's fine. But sometimes he doesn't do that. That's why the Bible says, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, well, as if we were dreaming. You might not have any premonition. You, the same day, it, it looks like the same thing. Joseph slept in the prison this night, like every other night. He was even still telling people, yes, we'll do it in, yes, in three days' time. Now we'll sort that thing out. It was normal day, routine. But this particular day, he woke up. He didn't know last night it was going to be his last night. If he knew it was going to be his last night, he would have written a poem. He didn't know it was going to be his last night in the prison. Some of you don't even know, today is your last day in that season. You're moving into a new season. I came to announce to somebody here, this service marks you shift into a new season. I know, you, I know you believe. I know you, you believe. This service marks your shift to a new season. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I will celebrate at the end. What about you? I will celebrate at the end. What about you? Open your mouth or say it. Oh, come and tell three people around you. Boldly tell them. Walk up to them. I will celebrate at the end. I will celebrate at the end. Oh, don't judge me now. Don't look at me now. Don't write me off right now. Don't judge me now. I will celebrate. You can take your seat. I will celebrate at the end. <laughs> I will celebrate at the end. It might not look like it now, but I'm going to celebrate at the end. Uh, don't judge me right now. Don't, don't make fun of me. Don't write me off. I'm going to celebrate at the end. <laughs> they, when they're making the sausage, it doesn't look pretty. But when it comes out, then you say, ma, then the sausage is celebrating at the end. Praise God. Somebody's here is going to celebrate at the end. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because that dance, hey. <laughs> That dance, they said you will not dance. <laughs> I don't know where I came for this morning, but I'm going to tell somebody here, yeah, the dance, they said you will not dance. The shout, they said you will not shout. Hey, the swag, they said you will not have. You are going to be dancing. You are going to be shouting. You are going to be jumping. Hey, because you will celebrate. Who is that one person here? That is sure they will celebrate at the end. Open your mouth, give him a. Oh my God, my God, my God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Tap somebody in your life and you tell them I will celebrate at the end. I will celebrate at the end. And you can take your seat. <laughs> I want to appreciate every one of you I want to celebrate your diligence in joining the prayer sessions I see you someone said how do you see us uh -uh. <laughs> I see you I see you particularly I want to a quick shout out to our young adults I'm I'm very 
very impressed that you're not just leaning on the faith of your parents that you're pressing into God yourself at this age young adults they are fired up they're fasting they're praying they're pressing into God it's incredible I want to thank God for every one of you, young girls. Excited and passionate and serious about the things of God. God will continue to honor your faith. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name. Yeah. If you're a lady and you've not yet registered for Balanced Living Conference, I don't know what you've been waiting for. Please register for the conference. You know, this is going to be the largest, best, most qualitative <laughs> conference, Balanced Living Conference we've ever had. God, obviously, normally, 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 we have a church like this, normally, you are going to, for efficiency and effectiveness of ministry, you're going to have people groups, you know, natural age groups that you're going to, natural groupings, okay, of people that you're going to minister to. So you can have a men's ministry, women's ministry, so and so and so forth, naturally. But for us, it's not just that. We have a mandate from God. God said to me, he said, look, I'll take care of my daughters for me. It was the mandate from God. And this, you know, this was not before we started. This was, we did, a, we had done, we've been doing this, and we did a, a, a session that was small. I think it was about 120 women or so. And, you know, we provided breakfast and everything for them, as we usually would do, and, and all of that. And I, and I came out of that session, and I was thanking God for that, for the provisions and all of that. And then God spoke to me. He said, women, you know, walk me through the scripture, how women go through a lot. He took me to Revelation chapter 12. And how the woman gave birth. Do you remember the story? And the serpent came and wanted to kill the woman. And the Bible says the earth opened up, swallowed the water. The serpent spewed that water to, swallow, to drown the woman. Then the earth opened up and swallowed the water. Then, and, then she was and given two wings and she flew away. You know, she was rescued. And God said, woman showed me through scripture how women go through a lot. The persecution that women go through. Persecution at work. Persecution. Even in the place where you find the greatest comfort of their lives, their homes. They go through a lot at work. They go through a lot. They have discrimination, gender-based dis gender, gender discrimination at work. A woman is doing exactly the same job as a man, and they pay the man more. Even both of them are colleagues. And the one the man is doing, if not, he can't finish it. <laughs> but let's, let's leave that for today. <laughs> let's leave that for today. Let's leave that today. Then the woman comes back home. She's multitasking, she's doing all of this and underappreciated at work, complete, sometimes completely not valued at all at home, underappreciated at home, you know, she's multitasking, doing all of this. In the place where she should find succor, where she should be refreshed, all right, she's been abused. Then she, she, in the midst of all of that, she still sacrifices for the children. Then the children grow up, they go away, they hardly call her. Ah, pain! that women go through. And God said, look after them. Whatever it will take, look after them. That is why we're doing this and we do it the way we do it with no expenses paid. It's a mandate. It's a mandate from God. And that's why God has been so faithful in providing for it. It's a mandate from God. It's a mandate from God. So we, we need to volunteers in this regard. And I would strongly encourage you to volunteer for that, particularly our men. You know, you've done that many, many years. And this is a great church that has a strong uh, ministry of helps. So let's, let's volunteer. Let's serve. Let's, let's volunteer. Let's serve. The women that were in the life of Jesus Christ, his biological mother Mary, even while he was in pain on the cross, he took care of her. Let's take care of them. Let's look after them. And for us men, Let's be sensitive. These women go through a lot. Trust me. If you have a sister, of course, if you're married, you have a wife, you're married, you look after them. Sometimes just a hug. It's not the marriage seminar. Don't worry. I have a salmon. <laughs> you know, I have a salmon. You know, let's look after them. It's a touchy subject for me. Let's look after them. Let's look after them. You know, this year, I want to just quickly emphasize one of the things that, we're, that was there last year and we're doing this year, even to a greater degree, is the healing rally. You know, the healing rally. The physical healing, for sure, no doubt about that. God has given us grace, by God's grace, in that area. But 
it's not just when you hear healing rally, particularly in a women's meeting, it's not just for the physical healing. There are many women that are physically they psychedelic. But emotionally they're broken. Psychologically they're broken. They have the outward manifestation of degrees, certifications, but they lack confidence. Esteem, it's not there. They lack it. They're broken on the inside. This is going to be a place where women are going to be made whole. Internally, they will be made whole. Psychologically, emotionally, they will be made whole. The pain of the past, the pain of the past, God will heal it. Please say amen. Amen. You know, I've had the privilege of serving for many years. And I can tell you how people can come with a very serious level of burden. And they come to churches, to church, and come to a program like that, and they leave the place, the burden is lifted because they got healed on the inside. Just because it's not physical, you don't see it. Does not mean they get healed on the inside. Ah, there's pain. A woman came to me many years, many, many years ago. She said, Pastor, I need to see you. And then she came to me, sat in front of me. And I said, Oh, yes, my mom, uh, we wanted to talk. And she said to me, she, she kept on talking, 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 talking. After maybe every 10 minutes or so, I will interject just to be able to shift the direction to get clarity on what she's been saying. She will stop me. She will continue talking. After a while, I just sensed that I should keep quiet. I should not say anything at all. She spoke straight for like an hour. And after she finished speaking, she said, thank you so much, Pastor. Thank you for listening to me. Nobody even listens to me. She said, I'm, I'm so grateful. I was going to say, say Madam, let, let us pray. She carried her bag. She said, thank you so much, Pastor. And then she walked out. So, of course, I was a younger pastor then. I was still in my 30s. So, I'm saying to myself, you know, I said, you know, all the, all the pastor seminar we go to, it teach us about efficiency of schedule and all of that stuff. So, I was thinking to myself, my God, what, did I do something wrong and all that? And I just heard the voice of God. You've helped her already. You've helped her. Sometimes, you don't even have any, anybody to talk to. So, if your wife is coming, she needs something new, a new attire. Praise God. Buy it. Ah. Don't squeeze your money with all your credit card. And it don't, doesn't. Ah. Take care of the women. Take care of the women. Take care of the women. Let them look, let them look nice. Let them look nice. All the women that are hearing me, except my wife, let them look nice. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Because for some people, this is the only part of the sermon. They will record. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> All right. We are going to explore something in the next two, three weeks. We can't get to the full depth of it. But I'm going to sensitize you to this topic. It's called authority and power. Do you want to learn this? All right, you're not sure. Okay, hopefully maybe in another five, ten minutes, I will ask you the same question again. But let, let us pray. All my channel everlasting God, we thank you. Hmm? You are set apart in a class all by yourself. I We love you, Lord. We just want to let you know this morning that we love you. Hmm? Thank you for first loving us. Thank you for your presence here. The things we're about to discuss with ourselves here today, Heavenly Father, by your spirit, we did not find it because of accomplished study. There's no way we could have found it. You graciously revealed them to us. And we are asking today, Father, that as you've revealed this to me, for what, because what I say to one, I say to all. Let it not just be information to the hearers today. Let it be deep-seated revelation to them in their hearts. So far, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Authority and power, part one. All right. Okay. So let's start with some introductory notes. Uh, But these introductory notes themselves are loaded. So if you're writing, please take them down. The sacrifice of Jesus... 
has granted us, no, that's salvation now. It's given us salvation, true salvation. But it did not end at salvation. It's not supposed to end at salvation. It's given us the privilege to host the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. You see, the Holy Spirit, the way God had planned it originally was for Adam and Eve to have the Holy Spirit, the presence of God, not the third person of the Trinity, being with them to administer the earth, giving them the mandate for the earth. But when man sinned, because we're talking about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit could not stay in sinful man. So God had to sacrifice for our sins so that we can be rendered blameless or presented blameless before him based on the cleansing of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? The, as a result of that, then the Holy Spirit will come and live within us. So our journey does not end at salvation when we encounter the saving grace of Jesus Christ. Our journey actually begins at salvation. Salvation is the entry point to a lifelong adventure in walking with God. Salvation is the beginning point in a lifelong adventure in seeking God. Okay? All right? So keep that in mind. Also, keep in mind that the presence of the Holy Spirit then in our lives does many things, but in the context of what we're about to discuss today, the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives shows us, show, reveals to us the reality of our authority in Christ. If you're right, write that statement down exactly the way it is. Because so that it can, whatever you're writing can be theologically sound. Okay, and we're going to see it as we walk through the scripture in a few minutes. The presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives doesn't give us authority. But it shows us the authority, the reality of the authority we have in Christ as a result of his finished work, which we experience in salvation. And then he also gives us access to the unlimited power of God. So the presence of the Holy Spirit in our, in our lives gives us access to the unlimited power of God. Okay? In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Acts 10, 10, 38, it says, our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Okay? So the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives then gives us access to this unlimited power of God. All right? Let's take it a step further. It will also interest you to know that from the very day you were born, Adam, let me say that actually the way it's supposed to be. Way before you were born, the enemy already earmarked you as one of those he wants to truncate their destinies. I got, to, I got to let you know this. Before you were born, the enemy already thought somebody is going to be born in that family. And that person in their destiny, they're going to come and give trouble. To the kingdom of darkness. We've got to do something and mess up that family line. So way before you were born, the enemy already marked you and I for trouble so that we don't fulfill our destiny. The whole battle is about fulfillment of destiny. I'm going to let you know that. You see, I don't have a job. I don't have a this. I'm sick in my body. I'm trying to stay in the country. I'm trying to get admission to school. I need to get married. I need to get this. It's all about fulfillment of destiny. In other words, the realization of the personal plan of God for your life. That's it. That's what destiny is. All right? That's what Satan is afraid of. Okay? So he uses all of these circumstances, all right, to barrage you and I. Okay? You know, you know when, remember the story when Saul was looking after his father's donkey in 1 Samuel chapter 9? Anybody remember the story? And then the Bible says the donkeys were missing. And then they started looking for the donkey. You remember? And they went to the mountains of Ephraim, the mountains of Shalisha. You know, he went, then they eventually got to a place called Zuf. This is First Samuel chapter 9. Then he said to the servant that was following him, he said, you know what? My father will not be bothered about us and not the donkey. We can't find the donkey. Let's start going back home. 
And the servant said, oh, no, no, no. I, I know there is a seer not too far from here. Let's go and meet that seer. That's the prophet. Okay, a Nabi, a prophet. Whatever he sells to us, then let's do that. So Saul said, well, I don't have anything on me. The, the, the servant of Saul said, I have something a little bit. We'll give it to the seer. You know, it's amazing that once they got to Samuel, Samuel told them, once they got to Samuel, let's give me the verse of scripture where that shows when they first got to Samuel. Samuel told them, don't worry about the donkey. Don't worry about the donkey. Really? I thought this thing was all about the donkey. I'm, I'm, I'm coming to you to talk to you about the donkey I've been looking for. If you know how much I, the effort I put into look for this donkey, I wanted you to pray for me so I can find the donkey. And Samuel said, before you prayed, Samuel said to him, verse 20 of 1 Samuel chapter 9, thank you so much. As for your donkeys that were lost three days ago, don't be anxious about them. They have been found. He has not prayed. He has not told Samuel what he's looking for. Somebody is here right now. The job you're looking for has been found. Yeah. The needs you're looking for, they've been found. Yeah. So he said, don't be anxious about them. He said, they've been found. All right, so you would think that, okay, if they've been found, thank you so much, Prophet Samuel. I didn't know you were interceding for me even while I was going through all of this. I'll see you. But he said, and in other words, there's something weightier than that. Keep going, please. He said, and on whom is the desire of all Israel? Is it not on you and on your father's house? In other words, there is something more important. God called you for the kingdom. He said, there's destiny. That's what he's telling him. That's the language. That's the metaphor for. There is destiny. The desire of all Israel. This old donkey issue was all about your realization of a dest dest destiny. I left the country of Nigeria 30 years ago. As a young adult in my 20s. What was my goal? I wasn't even born again anyway. My goal was to come, go to London, England, and practice pharmacy. That was a practice pharmacy. I had my plans. While I was in pharmacy school, in my final year, I had a plan of running a pharmaceutical company. I had the organogram. I, you know, we used to dream a lot. Drew everything out, put everything together. I did a course in my final year called industrial pharmacy. So that course really inspired me. And I did a course in management also. I did, took a, a course in management at that time. It inspired me. I put everything together. My plans were well put together and everything. And as God will have it, I got a fantastic job in a multinational company. So I was trained for that. So I was going to set up my own. But I didn't have the money. So my goal was to go to London, work for some years, maybe three, four, five years, then gather enough money. And at that time, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> it's interesting. It was one British pound to 50 naira. Selah. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> those that understand will understand. So, I, I, that was my plan. That was my plan. And I left. I, that plan was put in place. But you know, it was never about the pharmacy. It was never about the pharmacy. When I look back right now, 30 years, I say, ah, it was never about it. I see what God had planned. If I was in Nigeria, there's no, there's no anointing that would have gotten me saved. No matter how many people pray for me. If Elijah rose up from the dead, plus Moses and Samuel, I couldn't be saved. I, I was too gone. Too deep. Not occultism, I didn't do occultism, but too deep in the world. Far gone in worldliness. I can't be saved. And not only was I gone, Satan had done it in such a way that he had, he had packaged people around me. That's why the prayer we prayed this morning about God uprooting people. There were people, they were around me that they live and they breathe worldliness. And they were rooted and grounded around me. So, so that I had no escape route. So God had to first lure me, get me out from them, put me in a place where it was only me, and all of a sudden, for the first time in my life, not the first time I'm hearing, but for the first time, I, of course, he has removed all my props. For the first time, when I heard the message, ah, so this is what he's been saying. <laughs> I gave my life to Christ. I didn't have any other person, no friend. This is London in the 90s. No friend, nothing. You go, you walk, you come back home, you eat, you sleep, you go, you walk. When I come back from my Burger King job, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. is my shift. When I come back, I get back home from Liverpool Street Station, take a train, um, tube, uh, the central line to Bethnal Green Station, come out, take a bus, you know, to, to where I live. I get 
back. I've eaten anyway at work. I've taken burger. I've eaten, so no need to eat anymore. <laughs> take up my uniform. That's, this is around 11.45 now or so. Take my Bible. I'll read for five hours. Straight five hours. That's all I could do. There's no friend. No, those friends that would have called me, that would have taken me, <laughs> the people that were very highly advanced in worldliness, they would have taken me. There were nowhere to be found. So this is the only thing I knew. God was using that to prepare me. Prepare. I thought I was reading it so that I can, uh, God can help me come out of the deep um, um, request I was making of Her Majesty the Queen, which she was not yet fully aligned with. Do you, do you understand? That's what I thought I was saying. But God was using it to prepare me. Prepare me. And when God saw that, okay, I was now farther away from that worldliness, he now started opening the door. And the desire to practice the pharmacy was not even there. When I landed in this country, it was not even there. I went to school, I studied computer programming. It was not there. God took it completely out. It was not about that. So I wanted to let you know, so Satan is attacking your children. Don't think it's about you. Once you make it personal, then you have to confront the gates of hell yourself by your own power. It's not about you, it's about destiny. It's about God's plan for your children. It's about God's plan for your life. The issue of health, God showed me when I was in the tunnel, that it's got nothing to do, it's not about your body, it's not about you, it's not that, oh, Satan doesn't like me, somebody doesn't like me. No! It's about the fact that Satan wants to cancel your legit- legitimacy of staying on the earth. Because the body without the spirit is dead. And once your spirit is, once you don't have this body, you cannot function here. It's given unto man only once to die. You can't come back and say you want to function. If you ever see anybody that is dead in your dream, wake up and tell the person, I don't want to see you anymore. Go. So, that happens. And that's why authority and power is needed to make progress in life and to fulfill our destiny. Authority and power is needed in life. For you as a Christian, for me as a Christian, if we ever see our destiny fulfilled. If not, Christianity, I can tell you this without a shadow of doubt, Christianity will be the most frustrating thing you engage in. I'm telling you, you can write that as an addendum. If you don't understand the dynamics of power and authority, Christianity will be the most frustrating thing you ever engage in. Why? Because you will be window shopping. You will be seeing the promises in the Bible, people will be dancing the promises, shouting the promises, but you won't be seeing manifestation. And that's very frustrating. To window shop, it's very frustrating. I know for some people it's a hobby, but in real life, it's frustrating to see things that you cannot afford. You, can't, you don't know how. How to get it out of the book. You see that God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. But here you are today is the third week in the month of April, there about, I don't know, third week, second week, depending on the calendar, your calendar. Some of us pay our mortgage at the first week of the, of the month. Some of us pay our mortgage during the middle of the month. Some of us split our mortgage into two. And what about your circumstances are? Some of us now, it's three days, two days from paying our mortgage. For some of us, it's a week from paying our mortgage. We don't know where it's going to come from. But the book says... The silver and the gold is mine. The cattle and the thousand is mine. God will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Then you're frustrated because the power and the authority to bring it in is not there. Do you know how many pastors woke up this morning across the world that are very frustrated? They wish they would leave the pulpit because they don't know how they're going to pay, meet the needs of the church. And they, you know what is very frustrating for a pastor? Ah, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Very frustrating for a pastor. So say, I, I understand if it's my own house, but this is your house, this is your work. What's going on here? Do something. When we lack the knowledge of what to do, it's very frustrating, and the enemy is just excited. Ah, but not you anymore. Yeah. That's why, even for Jesus Christ, the Bible says they were amazed. Listen very carefully. That they said, What the word this is. For with authority and power, it commands the unclean spirits and they come out. Now, I want you to understand those two light words that were highlighted there. It commands the unclean spirits based on two things. What is the first one? And the second one is? For you to know it's not a mistake. In Luke chapter 9 verse 1, when Jesus was going to send out his own disciples also, it is the same thing he said to them. 
he called his 12 disciples together and he gave them what? Power. Come on. And it's not power or authority. It's not authority or power. It is power and authority. In other words, if you take one and you don't take the other one, you've not gotten everything. You need both to deal with unclean spirits. You need those to deal with diseases, sickness. You need those to frustrate the plans of the enemy in your life. You need those both to be able to advance in your life. You need both to live a life of quietness. You need both for your, for your realm to be quiet. You need the authority and you need the power. Somebody say power and authority. Oh, say like you believe in power and authority. So this is the question then. What is authority? I know, I know you say, oh, I, Pastor, you don't worry about that. I'm an English major. Thank God for you and thank God for your salvation and we honor you. We respect you and we salute your sleepless nights <laughs> in studying for it. We don't take it for granted at all and we don't under, undermine you. But we're talking of Bible now. And then is there a difference between authority and power? And if there is, what's the difference? We don't think it's thematics. What I'm telling you right now is doctrinally sound. All right? Do you want to know the difference? Yes, sir. And to know what it takes to get the authority? Yes, sir. Not really. All right. Let's call the choir back and let's think. Let's go back. After this is a Pentecostal church. All you want to do is let somebody say, hey, hey, ha, ha, lu, lu, yeah, yeah. And we do that for 30 minutes and we take our offering and we go home. And then when you get back home, the demon is waiting again. <laughs> These are the things that, you, see, you know, it's amazing that once you know this thing, before you even say, you foul, they will go. Just by walking. They know that you know. <laughs> that's, that's the interesting thing spiritually. You know, they know, spirits, they know that you know, you know. So let's look at it. What is authority? Definitions. So I'm going to define authority for you today, and then we'll look at what power is. Maybe next week. All right? Because this, 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 this is quite a lot. What is authority? Are you ready? So let me give you six things about authority. Number one, know this. Authority is the legal right to act and to make decisions based on your position. Write it down, please. I will take, leave it for you to write it down. Don't make a mistake on this one. Just write it the way it is. It is a legal right to act and to make decisions based on your position. Based on your position. Based on your position. But it is a legal right. So if there is no legal right, it's not authority. There have to be a legal right. Okay? And it, it is, ah, so you will see now. Next thing you need to know about authority is this. Authority always flows downwards. Authority never flows upwards. Authority always flows in what direction? It is unidirectional. It, it doesn't flow sideways. It doesn't flow upwards. It only flows downward. Now, I know this is very important. I need to mention this. John Maxwell is one of the um, greatest leaders that God has raised in um, the last 30, 40 years. He's an apostle, particularly in the area of leadership. We've hosted the Simulcast in House of Praise. We've hosted it for many, many years. He's a man that the first set of books I read on leadership as a Christian was written by John Maxwell, Developing the Leader in You. That's the first book I read. You know, he's a man I have tremendous respect for. And he wrote this book called 360 Degree Leadership. I want you to understand that that book is about leadership. It's not about spiritual power and authority. In spiritual authority, there's no 360 degree. That's the point I'm trying to make. In spiritual authority, there is no 360 degree. Now, of course, in leadership influence, in relational influence, there is 360 degrees. Okay? But in authority, because I'm saying that because a lot of young adults, you now work, and even for mature adults, you now work in organizations that are either matrix organizations or flat organizations. Flat organizations today, whereby the CEO, all right, does not even have a corner office, does have an office. You have what is called um, um, better way of working, be wow, and different, different nomenclatures that you guys use in your uh, different uh, uh, places of work whereby you just, you come in, the whole place is just completely wide open. Nobody has any office. So you just, 
whatever work you want to do, you just go to one terminal, you log in, and you start working from that place. And you have maybe two or three meeting rooms, and then you have to book it with your team. Anybody works in a place like that? Yeah, that's what, that's what happens today. Now, this is fine. It's fine. It's fine in organization. But what you need to understand is that spiritually, God doesn't just go any place in heaven and log into a terminal. <laughs> Do you understand? It's not a flat organization. Neither is it a matrix organization that, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm Gabriel, what do you think today? Why don't you just lead for one week and let's see, lead this meeting? It doesn't work that way, you know. He's the king of kings, his majesty. Do you understand? When he shows up on his throne, everybody removes their own crown and bow straight away. You understand? The 24 elders don't say, Well, you've been sitting on that throne for a long time. Why don't you let me think and lead this meeting today? You know, it, it doesn't work that way. And because it's difficult for you many times to concept, conceptualize that. So you, this needs to sit in your brain that the spirit, the realm of the spirit is hierarchical. I did not say church. I'm not talking of church now. I'm talking of the realm of the spirit. Is what? Hiera- strictly hierarchical and the authority only flows in one direction, it flows downwards keep that in mind keep that in mind as you go in this you will understand some things you cannot exercise authority over someone that is above you in the hierarchy you cannot you cannot you cannot command an adjour and you remember authority is the legal act to make decisions, right? To act and to make decisions, right? You can't make a decision concerning somebody above you. You can't act concerning, give a command, you know, and expecting action concerning some, somebody above you, an entity above you in the realm of the spirit. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. As a matter of fact, you can hurt yourself very badly, which many Christians also have become casualties of war. I hope you are understanding something. Okay. Now, this is a place, this particular line here, write it down and master it. Authority is usually attached to a position. That next line that is highlighted, three, two, one, can we repeat it together, please? Authority resides in a position. Let's do it again. Authority resides in a position. One more time, please. Authority resides in a position. Never forget that, please. Authority resides in a position. Authority resides in position. Authority is tied to position. It is tied to position. It resides in a position. It's critical you understand that. Our spiritual authority then is attached to our position in Christ Jesus. Authority is attached to a position. The spiritual authority we have is attached, is derived from our position in Christ. Now, very quickly, let me jump and tell you something to to clarify. Authority resides in a position. Where do you think power resides? (laughs) Let me just tell you one of the quick differences between power and authority. Authority resides in a position. What about power? Anybody wants to guess and I will tell you not to fast. <laughs> but that's okay. I know that will be very, it's very, for, for, for some people right now, this is very powerful incentive. <laughs> All right, just joking. Just joking. Authority resides in a position. Power resides in a person. Please keep that in mind. Authority resides in a position. Where does power reside? Authority resides where? Please, please say after me. See, the reason why we're saying it is not because we're turning it into a simple school or something. The more we say it, the more it leaves our head and resides in our heart. Authority resides in a position. Power resides in a person. That's right. Authority resides. It's attached to you. Once you lose that position, you lose your authority. It's as simple as that. You lose the position, you lose your authority. It's automatic. It's the same day. That's why you will notice also in your places of work, no matter what they call it, matrix organization, flat organization, they call it different, different things. If they have to let you go, as you are leaving, even the laptop they gave you before, five minutes after, if you say, let me log, you can't log in anymore. In some places, they've already wiped away the files. You can't log in. Is that not true? 
In some places, they will even actually tell you the key. They will have collected everything. You will leave everything before you leave that day. They will even tell you. It's correct. You can't have access. The same people where you tell them you do this, you did it at all. You can't work anymore. Once you lose that position, you lose that authority. This is a very important thing. Listen, please. Listen very carefully to me. We are fasting right now. and You know, by God's grace, I'm not a very prayerful person yet. I'm trusting God to be very prayerful. But I can tell you this. I can tell you this. One thing I can tell you, God has helped me. I will not consider myself, uh, maybe I'm being proud right now, but I will not consider myself a prayerless Christian. See? I will not consider myself a prayerless Christian. God, forgive me if I'm being proud. But, but you see, but I want to tell you this. Praying and fasting does not change our position. You need to understand that. You, know? you need to understand that. Authority is tied to what? Position. A position, your authority which is tied to your position has no regard for how you feel. You don't need to feel anyhow. By the grace of God, my God, by the privilege God has given me, okay, and the choices you have also made by, by the prompting of the Holy Spirit. I have the privilege of serving here as a pastor. Okay? I don't need to feel anything. If I tell my son that is there right now, I say, Please go ahead. This bottle of water that I'm looking at right now, it's cold. I need a hot one. Get me a new one. Or I need a big bottle of water. He will leave his seat immediately. He will go and get it. I don't need to feel... <laughs> no. No. I don't need to feel anything. Why? Because it's authority. It's authority. Do you understand what I'm saying? He has come to recognize that there's authority. You know, and it's amazing. I told you, children understand this thing a lot. I have one of my young daughters in this church, two year old girl. She understands authority. God gave her revelation for authority. <laughs> At the end of the service, she will tell her parents, you know, she wants to come and say it to me. She said it to me and say hello to my daughter in the bookshop. She, those two of us, she's very good friends with us. And then when she sees Topsy, ah, she looks at it. She realizes that mm, this woman might come and scatter my authority arrangements. <laughs> so then she greets Topsy. But she, she, she's come to the realize if only I can just be this man's friend and this lady's friend, anything I want in that bookshop. In terms of food, I will always be getting. And she understands that very well. If she's walking up to me, ah, this is true. You know, ask my pro- the protocol team. If she's walking up to me and they're telling her, hey, they're greeting her, hey, grip, she will not even, as I just walk up to me and say, Papa in the room. <laughs> Papa in the room. She understands. It's authority. So all she just needs is to say, take her to the bookshop. Do you want something in the bookshop? Say, yeah, 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 Papa. Take her to the bookshop. That's it. That's all, that's all she just wants. Authority. Our authority is tied to our position in Christ. Now, note this now. We derive our authority from our position in Christ, which is based eh, on the what? Finished work of Christ. It is not based on our works. It's not based on your works. It's based on the finished work of Christ. If you are genuinely born again. Now, now, this is a very important part because most people are not genuinely born again. They are pretending. They're not born again. They're pretending. If you are genuinely born again, the life of God has come into you. You will not be living the life you were living before. All things are passed away. All things have become new. The seed of God is now in you. You will not be desiring that lifestyle. A lifestyle of going to the club. That lifestyle of going to the strip club for some men. You call it the gentleman's club. It's not a gentleman's club. It's a pathway to hell. So a gentleman's club, that lifestyle of, 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 of frolicking and going around with your friends that are adulterers and fornicators, you will not be doing that. You will not have the desire to do that. And if you ever fall into it, there will be conviction. If you are genuinely born again, you will not be celebrating 420. Don't worry, young girls don't understand what I'm saying. You will not celebrate 420. You will not do that. You will not be into weeds, all of that. You will not be doing all of that nonsense. You will not be arguing, oh, God created all the plants. 
And he said, we should eat all the plant. You see, when you're acting like that, you're an advocate for the kingdom of darkness. Let's say the truth to ourselves. That's why the kingdom of darkness is having dominion over people. Because people say they're in Christ and they're not. If they're really born again, finished work of Christ. Now let's look at the scripture. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And he raised us up together, talking about Christ, and made us come and sit. Come on, come on, come on. Raised us up and made us sit. So we are up together and we sit. We are up and we sit. And where are we sitting now? In heavenly places in that's where we're sitting. Now, if we're born again now, that is, this is Ephesians chapter 2, verse what again now? Remind me. 6. 6. 6. So, let's look at this place where we're sitting. This place called heavenly places. Let's look at a better, um, sorry, a more elaborate description of this place. It says, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Remember, we are up together and we sit together. And he seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So you see now, he's talking about heavenly places. Now we want to find out what these heavenly places is about. Because we've got to know where we're sitting. Our position. Shall we? Come on, church. Shall we? Yeah. Alright, so let's look at it now. Then the first thing he tells us, the first two words there is, number one, it is far. Just tell me the first word. The first word. It is what? Come on, say it. Say it. What? Far. It is far. Now, this is telling you something immediately. The, he cannot, Satan cannot catch up with that gap. You cannot approximate that gap. That gap is very far. far. Now, no matter now, let, where I live, by God's grace, I live in the village, as, of course, as you know, I live in the village by the stream, you know. It's very far. You have to go and fetch water in the morning before and all of that. You know, I live in the village. You have to cook with fire and wood and all of that. Where I live. Some distance away from here. No matter how I shout from here, hey, they can't hear me there. Because it is far. 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 But now, it's not just far in terms of horizontal distance. It is far. Oh. Far above. So, no matter how much they're shouting, where you are, where you are, you can't hear. Because you have far oh. above. You have far above. Now, now let, me, let me say something to you. Just quickly, scientifically. We live on earth, and I know some of you, maybe one or two of you might be into conspiracy theory and think the earth is flat. <laughs> but the Bible tells us the earth is not flat. It says when you do the circle, on, so the earth is not flat. All right? So, so, anyway, we live on this earth right now, and the earth is a globe. So if you look at the earth, really, People are attached here, they are attached here, they are attached here, but nobody's falling down. What is keeping us? Scientists tell us that you have gravity keeping us, this centrifugal force, centripetal force, they tell us all these forces that are keeping us here. But something is keeping us. The reason why you sit on your chair and you're able to sit on the chair, they say it's gravity keeping you down. There's a force keeping you down here. Even if you do like this, you eventually come down. But if you go up, 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 you get to a place where you pass an atmosphere, then you get into space. The same thing that is holding people down here can't hold you down. You are still the same person, but right now, you can't be held down anymore. So, what is holding men down on earth, where you are seated, it should not hold you down. So, when you look at, when you see it on camera, and you see people in space, you know, and they're gliding, it's effortless. You say to yourself, my God, really? This is so amazing. You know, they become a wonder to us that are living on the earth. That's the way the Bible says we have become a wonder to many. They should look at us and say, why are you gliding through life? How come all these circumstances don't bother you? Because where I'm seated, you're not seated there. You understand? You understand? You, know, you have to let them know. I'm, uh, you know it's, I just let to let you know, I'm, you know. You know, I don't have to explain this to you, but it's like somebody in space and somebody on the ground. You know, we are not on the same level. You know, I'm, where I'm seated, you're not seated there. He said, but I see you sitting here in natural. I said, yeah, 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 yeah. That's my shell. Yeah, that's not the real me. The real me is not where you can see. Do you understand? Are you still with me now? Yes, so it's far above. Okay, it's far above what? Now let's look at relativity now to know what we are above. It's far above. What's the next word after above? Oh. 
it doesn't matter who they are. All, 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 all means what? All. Okay, when you say all, what is left out? Come on now, what is left out? The forces of darkness in your village, in your town, they are not left out of this scripture. So when you are reading this scripture, when it says all principality, for me, when I read this, when I get to the word all, before I get to the principality, I now start mentioning the ones I know that are around my people. All, then you put the name there. You know, you know when, we, when you read Greek mythology, you see very nice names. Some people even want to name their children those names. Those names are so nice. Asterix, Obelix, Hercules, Zeus. You know, you know when we were young, we used to read these comics, Hercules. Hercules was a very powerful, strong man. You know, let me say this to you. You see all those Hercules, Atemix, Obelix, all those things, they sound nice, they sound like, you know, nursery rhyme. They're demons. <laughs> I hope you know the name. You know, this thing they call Zeus is the God of Thunder. You know, in Pastor Chuma's village. The name of that thing, I don't want to mention it, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's and in my wife's village also, the name of that thing is a five letter word. Even when you hear the strikes, you boom. It's a very dangerous thing. But you know, but you know, you know, you know, in Greek mythology, they call it Zeus. It sounds like a cool guy. He's not cool. Do you understand? So when I'm reading, I'm reading, it's far above that name, far above it. I'm far above all the power, dominion, every name that is named is far above it. Far above every one of them. Far above the principality that controls witchcraft. Far above the one that controls warlocks and wizards. Far above every single one that controls Freemason, controls the occult. It's far above. Where I'm sitting is ahead of the head of Freemason. Listen, listen, listen to me. In the Freemason, in the Freemason system, the worshipful Lord and what they call them, worshipful master, rather, worshipful master. We're not on the same level. Where I'm seated is far above where I'm seated. The highest of all the witches in Canada. I'm not on the same level as him, as him or her. Where I'm seated is far above every one of them. So I can tell them to hell with all the witches. To hell. With free mercy. Thank you for the three and a half. Amen. It takes it, it takes time to get into your spirit because people have been dominated so well. Because you think, you see, when I say that, the first thing Satan tells you is that hey, 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 you know that man has been praying and fasting for a long time. That man, can't you see how lean he is? He prayed and fasted. You, <laughs> you that <laughs> you're struggling. You see, you know, you know that you didn't do the six p.m. You know, you know, by kind of like one p.m. You know, you were already struggling. Don't say what that man is saying. You no, know, I do. What I'm saying is not based on my prayers. What I'm saying is based on the finished work of Jesus Christ. You understand? And you can rise up and say the same thing also. I'm seated in Christ Jesus. My position is in Christ Jesus. My position is in Christ Jesus. I'm seated in the heavenly places far above all principalities. All powers, all might, all dominion, every name that is the name. I'm above you. I'm above witches. I'm above wizards. I'm above your cults. You're far above. Now let me ask you, where are you seated? Come on. Far above. Come on, house of praise. Where are you seated? One more time, where are you seated? Far above. Now give him a shout if you're seated there. Yeah, yeah. Please take your seat. So don't let anybody condemn you. You're seated there. I'm not fast enough, but I don't need to feel anything. I don't need to feel anything. You don't need to sense anything. It's my seat. That's where I'm seated. You understand, Satan? That's where I'm seated. And it is secure. It is secure. That's why I'm seated. Right? I'm far above you. You see, this will help you now when you start understanding. When we do that kind of a faith, you will understand it more. This is the reason why when Satan, Lucifer, in, and let's look at it. Give me Isaiah 14. Let's start from verse 12. If I don't finish with my slides today, that's fine. we we'll continue next week. There's a lot loaded in this slide, however. Uh-huh. <laughs> How are you falling? <laughs> oh, Lucifer. 
son of the morning. Lucifer, you know, you know, is the devil. He became the devil. How are you cut down? You will weaken the nations. I want you to just hear what Lucifer is after. All right? For you said in your heart. Now, he said, I will. What is the third word he said now? Ascend. So, ascend is in what direction? Up. Okay. So, you remember, authority only flows downwards. So, he's trying to go up to get more authority to be seated in a higher hierarchy. He said, I will ascend into heaven. Keep going. I will exalt my throne. Come on. Above the stars of God so that he can have the authority over them. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation where God sits. On the farthest stars of the north. Look at it now. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Now, I will now be like what? <laughs> now, the reason why you need to understand something about God. Listen. I'm jumping a little bit, but you need to understand something very quickly. God, almighty in heaven, does not have authority. Because every person, listen, listen, listen. Just listen to what I've just said now so you're not confused. Every person that exercises authority on the earth must be given. Jesus Christ came here and he said, what did he say in Matthew 28 verse 18? All authority and has been given to me. Remember when the people came to Jesus, they said, who gave you this authority? Authority must be given. God was not given authority. God is the most high. That's why he's the most high. If anybody gave him authority, the person must be higher than him. But he's the most high. So authority resides in God. Just like power resides in God. So anybody, that's why you will see this now. It will make sense to you. Romans 13 verse 1. Look at it now. Romans 13 verse 1. Romans 13 verse 1. It's not on my slide, but look at it. Let every soul be subject to government authority. For there is no authority except no authority, including the witches and the wizards. Including the wizards. Because God is the Lord of hosts. Not Lord of angels. Host. Any being. So all of them derive their authority from God. And God has done it in such a way that when Jesus ascended, give it to me. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 10. I see your spirit is expanded so I can go a bit deeper. He who descended is also the one who ascended and when they ascended, see that those two words again? Far above all the heaven. So yes, they are in the realm of the spirit. But where he went to is above everywhere they went to. And the reason why he did this is so that when we are seated in him, we will not be on the same level as witches. We're not on the same level as occults. We're not on the same level as familiar spirits. No. Necromancers, the spirits they consult, we're not on the same level as those ones. We're far above them in the hierarchy. We're far above them in the hierarchy. The person that is, the only person that is higher than us is God Almighty himself. There's nobody that is higher than us where we're seated. Are you still with me? Where are you seated again? I want to hear you. Where are you seated? You know, if it's, this is the only thing you take out of this service and you enter your spirit, when you're sleeping, even in your sleep, if something comes to attack you, you just say, far above. They will run away straight away because they know you now know where you are. Far above. Far above. All right. Shall we move on a bit, a bit more? Okay. Now, this is going to get interesting now. This position, please write this down, is fixed. It's fixed. It's not shaking. It's not moving. It is fixed. It's fixed. Why? Because, listen now, I want to walk you through now for you to see it very well. Write down that scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 to 9. Because this is how Satan will not be able to condemn you. You'll be able to push back on his condemnation. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6 to 9. This position is fixed. Why is it fixed? Because, let's walk through it again. Verse 6, Ephesians chapter 2. Raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show us the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith that is not of yourself. Oh my God. For it is the gift. Uh, verse 9. Come on. Not of works, lest any man where you are seated is not of works. I didn't earn it. I didn't deserve it. I didn't work for it. It's not of works. It's a work of grace for God to save me and he tells me that where I'm seated is based on my salvation. And my salvation I did not work for. So where I'm seated, Satan, listen to me. It's a gift of God. And God told me in Matthew chapter 20, he said, can I not do it? 
with, can I not do what I want with what I have? He said that man came at the 11th hour. You came at 6 a.m. You know, you've worked all the, I said, I gave you the same amount of money. Is it not my own? Satan, yes, it is true. You are Asian spirit. You've been there long ago from the aeons. You know, I'm just being, man, God, man just got created. What's your problem? If God wants to lift me higher than you, he can do what he wants. He gave you the authority you have, and he's there to give me authority higher than your own. Because I'm created in his own image, which you are not. So you need to understand that it's fixed because it's the work of grace. Now, now this is, let's get to practicals now, shall we? Okay. This is what you have to know. We don't grow in the position, but we grow in the knowledge of that position. Now, let me explain it to you. Son, come here. Can you bring that chair for me, please? Bring the chair there for me. Let me show you something here. Bring, bring it up for me. Let's place it there for me. Oh, actually, president, so everybody can see it to some extent. Thank you. All right. So, let's say that ground floor there is the earth. You and I are seated here right now in heavenly places. Where we're seated, all right? So, if you look at it from the point of view of these stairs now, as these stairs cascade down, you are seated on this level now, you know? Let's say, like, because we're far above them, which is, I may be just one step above the earth. And they're, they're messing you up, they're troubling because you are thinking you're on the earth. But you're not. That's where you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Can you see the picture of where you're seated? As long as you see yourself as I'm an ordinary man here on the earth, the witch that is just one level, lowest level in the realm of the spirit can be troubling you. And then you are trying to, you're trying to, and you remember, you can, authority cannot be exercised against somebody above you. And here you are, you did not manage of things to deal with the spirit that's above you. No, 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 no. That's not, that's not why you are. You are so. This thing, is, this thing is not long enough. I wish this thing was. <laughs> you're far above them. Now, this is what is important there. So, this position where you are now, this level, which you are in Christ Jesus, at the right hand of God, this position is not going to increase. This position is fixed on this level. You can't grow in, that, in the position. Do you understand? This is the zenith of the position. It's already at the right hand of God the Father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, this is however what happens. The day you were seated in that position, all right, there was mystery that undergirds that position. So what many of us do is that we're saved, we sit on it, but we never open the book on how to operate the position. So the position becomes useless to you. I don't know if you've ever seen this advert where you have these two, one old man and one old woman, they're in the house, and it's an insurance advert. And they say they're sitting on, sitting on gold. And they're struggling financially. They say, you are sitting on a gold mine. And they're not hearing. Both of them already didn't use hearing it anyway. <laughs> this, you see this? Somebody seen that advert? I like that advert a lot because that's exactly how Christians are. You are sitting there, but you don't appreciate where you're sitting because the manual that tells you what the position is about and how to operate that position, you don't know it, but you're sitting there. So when you see people manifesting, you're saying to yourself, ah, I just hope God can change my own position too. No, 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 no. This position, if God ever changes this position, you will be God. Because the person you are next to is God. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, what the, the role of the Holy Spirit is to tell you, take the book. Then you take the book, then he begins to, you know, when you take the Bible, there are two things that must happen. You, you and me, we open the book. Then the Holy Spirit will open the seal. You understand? So the two of them must be open for you to gain anything. You must open the book yourself. So you have to open the book first, at least. So when you start, then those people will come, you invite him, he will open the seal. Then you will not start seeing. This is what now makes the difference. I'm sitting on this authority level in terms of authority. I'm not talking of power now. I'm talking of authority. Remember we're talking of authority, right? Not power. We're seated in Christ Jesus. It's the same. We didn't work for this. Now, where, where the difference is between you and me and the person that just gave me life today and me is that I have I've read to understand more about where I'm sitting than that person. Do you follow that? Yes. 
So what we grow in is that we grow in the manual of operation. So we know how to operate where we're sitting. So this is what you grow in. And I will show you that in a few minutes. So you can't just sit there and not take this. So keep that in mind, all right? Now, I said when you take the Bible, you have to open it, and the Holy Spirit will open the seal. See? So the diligence part comes in you opening it. The spiritual sacrifices, then, is what enables the Holy Spirit to unseal it. Okay? Let, <laughs> let's, 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 let's get to this a, a little bit. Um, give me a, a second here. I pray that the Holy Spirit will open the book for you. Amen. I pray the Holy Spirit. Now, can you give me Isaiah chapter 29, verse 10, the NCV translation, the New Century Version translation. If you can find, if you have that, if not, just give me the NKJV. And I'll deal with that. Okay, that's all you have. Okay, sure, all right. For the Lord has put upon them the spirit of this sleep. Keep going. Keep going, please. And close their eyes, namely the prophets, and they has covered their heads, namely the seers. I just wanted to show you that what I just said is in scripture, all right? And he closed their eyes, namely the prophets, and covered their heads, namely the seers. Keep going, please. The whole vision has become like a word of a book. And what has happened to this book? Sealed. Which man delivered to another one? The one who is literate. So he said, read it, please. So to read it, he opens it. And he said, I cannot. Why? It's sealed. Then the book is delivered to another one. Who is illiterate? That one said, read it, please. That one said, I'm, one said I cannot even open it because I'm even illiterate. I don't even understand it. So it is both sealed and closed. So we have to open it and let him unseal it. Okay? But so where we pay the price... Praying and fasting is for him to unseal. Once the seal is boom, broken, you see things that people that just open can never see. Are you still with me? Yes, Shall I continue with this? Yes, a few minutes now. Okay, let's see. I've not gotten anywhere at all in this sermon today. But because of your time, we'll keep it short for you. Listen, write this down. If we lack the knowledge of this position in Christ, we will be unable to benefit from the position. I just told you that. Psalm 78 verse 9. Very important. Psalm 78 verse 9. He says, the children of Israel, they were armed. They were carrying bows, but they turned back in the day of battle. And that's what happens to many Christians. You are armed. You have the position. You have everything. But people are turning back on the day of battle because they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. They don't know who they are. And I want to help you to know how to grow in that today. Did you capture this? Okay. Okay, I'm just showing you that scripture. They turn back, but you will not turn back in the day of battle. Yeah. All right, let me ask you a very, let's walk through a very important question and let's see if we can answer it very quickly and then wrap up. Far above. This is the question. How do I grow in the knowledge of my authority in Christ? Do you want to know? <laughs> you know, it sounded like somebody that say, ah, okay, it looks like there's work to be done. <laughs> Don't be scared. I'm telling you, this is a template of how to work confidently and eat with witches and eat with wizards. And what they put there to poison you, they, you are the one that eats it, but they're the one that die. <laughs> you eat it, but they die. And they're looking at you, ah, it's alive. How? They can't understand it because they don't understand. In that place where we're seated, they can't poison you. In this place where we're seated, you know, remember, the one that is lower than you cannot make decisions concerning you. So, Satan is, I'm above your pay grade. You can't make decisions concerning my destiny. You can't tell me how it's going to end. Uh, I'm the one to tell you how it's going to end. You can't tell me, Satan, that it's not going to end well for me. Who are you? Who are you? 
See, even in my voice, you can hear the authority. <laughs> because this is not a game. I know what I'm talking about. Who are you? What are you talking about? Do you want to know how to grow in this authority? Yes, sir. All right. It's not as relax a little bit. It's not as tough as it is. It's not another 300 day of fast. Relax. Don't get into works. Just follow me. The three keys, I want to just give you three. To help you to grow in the knowledge of your authority in Christ. Because it doesn't benefit you if you don't have the knowledge. If I say, uh, my son there says, if he says, oh, um, uh, you know, I'm going to need some things. And I say, okay, no problem. Um, I have it at home right now. Why don't you go to my house, um, pick it up. If you, as you go into my living room, you know, you see it there among my files there. Pick up a thousand US dollars there and, and um, help yourself and um, do, buy whatever you want to buy. He says, thank you. He drives all the way down there. He looks for it. It's there, but you can't find it. It is as good as the way it was when it was still here. That's what many of us Christians do. Because we don't know how to find this thing. And I'm trying to show you right now how to find it. Shouting at the devil is not necessarily warfare. Screaming at him. Say that. Say that. It, it, <laughs> he, you know, he knows. He knows when he hears people. He knows. It doesn't have to be like that. Whereas you can find somebody else that put their hand in their pocket and walk towards a madman and say, what is that? Sit down! And the madman looks. And sits down. All of a sudden. Why? Because it's authority. He knows this one knows. Because you see, when you know this thing, it's light in you. Light. And they can see that light. Human beings cannot see, but they can see that light. And the light is the light of, is the life is the light, light of men. Are you ready? The first one is this. By growing in knowledge. But it's not just growing in knowledge. This is the key. It's not just growing in knowledge, reading everything. It's growing, there's a specific syllabus to this. Please note this. You can't just go into the university, attend any kind of lecture in any room you want to attend. You see a beautiful girl walk into a particular class. You walk there, you sit next to her, you sit down, you take the lecture on that day. The lecture happens to be psychology, 301. Then you, you go another day, you say, ah! My God, I like this. Hey, hey, hello, babe. How are you doing? So and so and so, so. You sit down there. So what's there? You say, I can't tell you one. You sit down there. If you do that for four years, you won't come out with anything in the university. And that's what many Christians do. They just read this, read this, study this, study this, study this, and say, I'm reading my Bible. I'm trying to show you how to go through a particular syllabus and come up with certification in the spirit. So it's a tight syllabus that's been prescribed for us. The syllabus says, level one, first important thing you have to know is the knowledge, knowledge of what? Person. Knowledge of a person. Knowledge of the person of Jesus Christ. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 18. Look at it now on the screen. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You have to grow in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Now, you would think you know Jesus. Men would say, oh, Jesus is oh, Jesus, my Savior, Jesus my Master. Some young girls would say, oh, Jesus kind of like my pal, you know, Jesus is my kind of my cool friend. Jesus is my days, you know, kind of like, you know, my, I call him my, you know, my, my mate, you know, kind of my friend. You know, people that say Jesus is their friend, they've not done what Abraham has done. And they call Jesus friend. Is it, you think Jesus is just friend by liking him on Facebook? <laughs> when God calls you friend, it's actually a gift. It is a reward of a long time of relationship before you can say, you're my friend. A friend is not the type of friend you think he is. Friend in this case means somebody that we can reason together about what we want to do. It's responsibility. You understand? So, so you just somebody that's giving a life. For me, I just see Jesus as my friend. We are liar. What kind of friend is that? Do you know? Do you understand what you just said? If he's your friend, then you're taking burdens from him. You're hearing his, the burden of his heart. If he's your friend, he knocks on your door. Even when you're sleeping, you wake up. You wake up, you attend to him. He says, I have something I want to tell you right now. And it's 3 a.m. You just went to bed at 2.30. You, you don't say, ah, Jesus, leave down until tomorrow now. No. You wake up. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And you sit down. You worship. You assess. You ascend. Then you're able to converse as friends. And he's able to tell you, this is what I'm thinking. You know, people are coming to this balanced living conference. I want somebody, an intercessor, to be praying concerning souls that will be saved. I want to leave that burden with you. And you say, leave that one with me. 
from now to the end of that conference, I'll be praying for souls to be saved. And Jesus said, we're friends. It's okay. What was that thing you were praying about at that time too? You to leave that one with me. You see now, that's friendship. So it's, friend, it's not just friends. <laughs> so you grow. It's a particular syllabus. You grow in knowledge of the person. I'm telling you, once you start studying about the person of Jesus Christ, you'll be shocked that you don't know him. You know a lot about him, but you don't know him. Just like Job said, he said, I've heard about you by the end of the year. He said, but now my eyes see you. Men, most Christians, not many, most Christians don't know Jesus. Yeah, they've been saved by Jesus, but it doesn't mean that they have a personal, they know him like that. To know the person of Jesus. Now, let's, let's, let's go on. The second thing you need to know, grow, grow in, you need to grow in the knowledge of the purpose of Jesus Christ. The knowledge of the purpose of Jesus. The first one is the knowledge of the person. The second one is the knowledge of the purpose. Purpose. What is the purpose of Jesus Christ? You know, when you, when you start knowing somebody, you know, you start finding out more and more about them. What does he really want? What is it for Jesus? What is in it for Jesus? Okay, he's my healer. I get that. He came with that, a gruesome death, atoning sacrifice for me. Or I get that. I, uh, he loves me. Or I get that. He supplies my needs. He protects me. All right, okay. I, I, wisdom demands that at one point you ask yourself, uh, this, this is, this, if you meet somebody in church here, every Sunday you walk in, you say, ah, good afternoon, good morning. He gives you a thousand dollars. Next Sunday, good afternoon. How are you? A thousand dollars. You see, you see the different reaction. Somebody else is saying praise God. Another one is saying ah ah ah. You see, you start asking yourself, ah, what is it now? By the time, third time or fourth time, you start saying, but I'm, 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 no, today again. Well, I've not done anything. Something begins to tell you that ah, is this person going to come and demand something one day? You see, you have to understand. He loves you. He came from heaven. He died for you. You sing all this as a song. You don't think he has a demand. <laughs> Wisdom should tell you. All this love is pouring on you. You almost, you almost had an accident. He saved you. He protected you. You almost died. He kept you. You know, he did all of this for you. Your son, your daughter, he healed you. All of this, he brought you to this country. You thought you were going back, but he kept you. <laughs> Listen to me, bro. He has... <laughs> A great man of God, Pastor Iya Deboye, our father in the Lord, said when he first became born again, he, you know, when he was younger, he used to have malaria fever every time, malaria fever, a lot, malaria fever. So one day, as a very young Christian, he said to God, Lord, I don't want to be having this malaria, just heal me permanently and I will save you. And then God healed him permanently. Then he was, but he was a lecturer, senior lecturer in the university, teaching mathematics, advanced mathematics, applied mathematics for that matter. And doing all of that, and, and was doing that, and he was doing some work. And then one day God came and said to him that he wants him to come into full time ministry. And he said, ah, no, 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 I don't want to do that. And God said, but you, you said I, you will save me. <laughs> That's when you begin to realize that. When you start understanding his purpose, then you start understanding, you want, once you start doing that, you understand something critical about God. God is concerned about his purpose. You know, Proverbs 19.21, put it on the screen. Do you still have some time? Yes. Proverbs 19.21. <laughs> this will help you. This will help you know sometimes the... Can you give me the KJV, please? KJV version, thank you. Why sometimes we struggle in the place of prayer? Okay, this is not the one I'm looking for. Transition. But it doesn't matter. Give me back the NKJV. NKJV. There are many plans in a man's heart. Do you have plans for your life? Oh, yes. uh-huh. Thank you very much. Just like me too. But there are many. God says, I know there are many. He said, but well, let me let you know. Only the Lord's cancer. Understand? This, is, this scripture is what is frustrating many people's prayer life. So you prayed and prayed and prayed. And you say, God, I don't even know why you're not answering me. Because only his cancer will stand. So wisdom now demands that when you have a plan, you check it with his purpose. Because I don't want to get to that point and his purpose frustrates my plan. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I'm going to check it. So it's better I know his purpose right now. So that whatever I'm planning, I, I can take cognizance of his purpose in it. All right? 
And you have to understand something very important, which I'm going to talk about next week. The power of God only functions to bring the will of God to pass. So even no matter how anointed somebody is, they lay hands on you, they pray for you, if it is not the will of God, it will never happen. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Come on now. As it is in heaven. And towards the end of this, he said, thine is the power. You see that? Thine is the glory. The power of God is only to bring about the Lord. And number three, so here, let's look at the purpose of God here. He says, and Jesus said to them, today salvation has come to this house because he's the son of Abraham. For the son of man has come. What is his purpose now? To seek, come on now. Somehow in your whole plan, in the whole thing you are dealing with your whole life, please find this inside. Put this inside your agenda. If you don't put this thing inside your agenda, you are going to be having issues with God. I guarantee you that. If this issue of getting people saved, whether to seek them or to save them or to seek and to save them, one, one way or another, whether seek them to means invite them, get them to a place, reach out to them, and so on and so on. Save them means you be part of the prayer, to praying for them. To be if you are not part of that, you will just realize that the knowledge, the book, you are opening it, but it's sealed. And the position is not benefiting you. I'm explaining to you why many Christians are messed up. Because all they want just want is my car, my house, my car, my house, my children, my car, my house, my children. And God say, hey, 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 hey. What about my purpose? I came all the way to seek and to save that which is lost. Number two, you also came. This is the purpose for which God, the Son of God was manifested. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Let me say this very carefully. For all of my pastor colleagues that are out there respectfully and those that will be watching this later on, please, in every of your service, and I mean every of your service, have a mind that you are going to come against the plans and the works of the devil. That is the way to get Jesus on the same. That is his purpose. Don't run away from the works of the devil. Don't run away from it. Confront it. Confront it. Destroy the works of the devil. Anywhere you find the works of the devil. And the first work of the devil that he's speaking about here in this context, in First John chapter 3, is sin. Don't say because somebody's going to leave the church that you won't talk about it. Talk about it. Even if they're the biggest giver in your church, let them leave. Jesus does not need their money. It's quiet. It's true. I'm here. What well, I'm telling you, don't say, oh, well, you can say that pastor because the church is big. I tell you this, and there are people that are here that will tell you, right, when the church was far smaller, I used to speak, I preached so hard against fraud in this city from immigrants, conducted by immigrants. Is that true? So hard that they came to a time telling me that, you know, your life is in danger, people are threatening you, they're saying, speaking about you in different places. I said, it's better for me to live, it's, 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 for me to die is gain, for me to live is, is Christ. What's the big deal? Why will I live here? This is the work God has given us. I spoke so hard about it. One man was a big froster. He was in church. One day he came. I said, you can't come and launder your image here. There was one man that donated the car to the church. Same day, I called him. I was upset. He gave the car to the, to the church. He even wrote, wrote, wrote the name of the church on it already. What? Nonsense. This froster. I said, give it to me. I called him. He thought I was going to say thank you. But by, by the time he came, I had already removed the name that he put. I personally removed the name from the van. I took my key. <laughs> what is this? I called him. I said, take a key. Don't do that again. Don't do that. Don't clean up your life. Don't come and launder your image here. What do you think this is? You think, you think we're playing games here? You don't need to clap, I'm telling you. We're not, we're not playing games here. This is serious. We don't need corrupt money. We don't need corrupt money. We're not here because it's not for us that give us money. It's real, real people that God has taught their heart. That are best and I can tell you this, we're not lacking. We're not lacking. We lack nothing. We lack absolutely nothing. The ones that are taking the fraudsters money, they can't do the things we're doing free. Have you ever wondered? You went to school, analyze it. <laughs> analyze it. Pick up the phone and call the international center and say you want to rent the place for 31st of December. They should send you a proposal how much it's going to cost. Pick up the phone and call out the visual and tell them you want to host 10,000 people in a place, in a, in a place that sits 10,000 people. Or the visual, you're thinking of the visual for a place that they want to have 150,000 square feet. And ask them what is it going to cost. They should give you a proposal. Just add those two alone together and see if you can still breathe properly. 
<laughs> and all of this, all of this is done, is done completely free. And nobody's under tension. Because of where we're sitting. You don't need money from Froster. You don't need that. You don't need that. You, the work sin is the work of the devil. If there's somebody that is in your church, as my fellow pastor, my friend, I say this respectfully to you, and he's a big giver, but he's going to marry a second wife, call him and tell him, I don't want you to do that. Don't do that. And he says, well, I want to do that. Tell him then, if that's what you're going to do, then say, well, I mean, I just want to tell you this, and then all the things I'm giving for the junior church, all the junior church, just tell him, carry your thing. We don't know our children. Don't release the spirit of immorality on our children. Carry your thing and go. Tell him. Tell him that. You see, if you do that and you stand for righteousness, then Jesus will stand with you. Yeah. Confront the works of the devil. I stand there by the grave of Almighty. I've done this for over 24 years. There's no human being in this Toronto that can say, Pastor Wally called me personally to say, bring money for this. Nobody can tell me that. 24 years. Ask anybody in this city. I stand on my word. Nobody. I've never called anybody personally. I've not called anybody into the room. I've not asked anybody, lobbied anybody for anything. I know where I serve. I know who called me. Listen to me. This is not boasting. If it sounds like boasting, I apologize. But it's not boasting. I'm telling you. Destroy the works of the devil. It's real. Don't look at your children and they do something wrong and you, 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 you think you will love them out of it. That's not love. Tell them the truth. Tell them the truth. This is wrong. And come. I love you. Let's work together to solve it. Confront it. Don't let your son bring a girlfriend into the house and they lock the room. And you now say, say, what are you say? We're just reading together. What kind of reading together is that? <laughs> reading together. I'm a fool. I'm a fool. Reading together. Oh boy. This thing has gotten somehow. <laughs> are you still with me? You enter, you go, you go and you go to see your son, you go to see your daughter, you're smelling weed all over their body. Ah, you say what is it? No, it's my roommate. You see, you see, I was once a teenager, I know what I understand what I'm talking about. It's your roommate. Eh. And the smoke on you is more than the water of your roommate. <laughs> it's your roommate. It's your roommate. <laughs> no, you know, our, my, our parents, when we were growing up, I mean, for most of like my own biolog my, my biological parents, they were not born again when they were growing up. Thank God. My dad is born again, and my mom is, was born again before she transitioned to glory. Born again, and thank God for that. But when I was growing up, they weren't born again. But those kind of things, they just reset. They reset you straight away. Straight. They, were, they, they had the mandate from the Almighty God to, to quickly reset your brain for you. No, straight away. No, I, there was, I was 17 years old. I came back home from university. My, my, it was just a Christmas time. There was a party going on. I was hanging out with a girl. My dad was looking for me everywhere. And then my, my, my dad came to that place where I was talking to this girl. It was a bit dimly lit. Um, my dad came there just said, Ah, let's call my name. Wally. And, and it was me. I came out of the shadows. <laughs> so, and you know, once they call like that and they don't say anything, they just turn. They're going. They, without saying a word, it means follow me. So then, by the time we got to the place, I felt, he felt maybe it was a bit advantageous. He turned around. He said, oh, you didn't there? I said, oh, we were just discussing some, like, schoolwork, like, she just came back from university, too. We just got this semester. Was, my father just, I'm sure my father just thought, you think I'm a fool? You're discussing this semester, you don't find a place where it's littered, well littered to be discussing this semester? Of course, he rebooted my computer. <laughs> and when he rebooted my computer, you know, I must let you know, Malwares and apps that ought not to have been there, <laughs> that have been downloaded. Do you understand? Uh, does anybody understand what I'm going to say? Yeah. Immediately by the reboot, somehow I didn't find them anymore. Straight. Even when you are going back, even when the lady is calling you, oh, hi, lady, you want to continue conversation? You say, please, I beg you. I beg you. I beg you. <laughs> what? Is, what? what I, you won't tell anybody, but what I went through in the last five minutes, I'm the one that know. <laughs> Does anybody understand reset? Yeah. Okay, let me, let's put it there. Anybody ever got reset? <laughs> Serious reset? And those reset? Ah, you know those reset were good. Number three, you have to grow in the knowledge of the provision of Christ. This is the very important one. The reason why we say the things we say is because of this. You grow. When you, when you really understand this, I'm telling you, you will never 
you, your emotions will never be affected by presence or absence of finances. Never. You will just be the same. Thank God. To God be glory. That's fine. To God be glory. That's right. We don't have anything. That's all right. That's all right. To God be glory. That's all right. You will not be. You will not be. Because you understand. You have a relationship. You know the person. You know his purpose. And you know his. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord, and all is fullness. You see, people, we don't really take time. Because we read it. We've opened the book. But the Holy Spirit has not unsealed it. When the Holy Spirit really unseals this for you, you will understand that the richest man in the world today, okay, or has ever lived or at any ever time, they didn't get rich outside of the permission of God. Because the original one that owns every mining deposit, everything is God Almighty himself. You need to, you know, if this really, for a long time, when I was going through a lot of financial struggles, so I, I bought a lot of books. First, I bought books in the secular, uh, something from the billionaire code, many books like that. The Richest Man in Babylon and all of that books, you know, that Napoleon Hill. Um, Hill. I bought those books. I read all those. Then I bought a lot of spiritual books. I have them in my library. A lot of spiritual books. I, I started reading them, reading them. And I, get, I gained a lot from it, no doubt. I gained a lot from those books. Um, but somewhere in my mind, I found out my emotions were still up and down. I needed, a, I needed God to do a deep work by revelation. Then God has, took me to the book of Revelation. And I started having the reality of what heaven looks like. Ah! When I saw the reality of what heaven looks like, it changed my mindset. Today, honestly, honestly, I stand there before the Almighty God. If God tells me to do something today, and it's going to cost me a hundred million dollars, yes, Lord. Because, you see, hundred million dollars, and ten dollars is exactly the same thing. Uh, all I'm saying, all I'm just saying to you right now, I know you will say, "Don't mind that man." He doesn't know what I'm saying. I, I know what I'm saying. <laughs> I know what I'm saying. It's exactly the same thing. The only difference is zeros. The only difference is zeros. It's just zeros, and it's because of where the dot is. If you move the dot, you keep on moving the dot. And when you keep on moving the dot this way, you are increasing the value. So the only difference between ten and 100 million is value. It's value. It's the value you give out. That's all. That's all. It's value you have, value received, value perceived, value discharged. That's it. You know, I'm not teaching on finances. Don't worry. You, you need to, so when you, when you see us in the house of praise, you know, you say, don't go and try to. And you see, we finish the service now. I say, Pastor Shuma, please take the offering. I walk away. I don't bother. Sometimes we forget. The ushers to come to and say, Pastor, Pastor, I'm about to close the service. I said, 33 people, this and that and that. And they say, Pastor, I'm not taking offering. You know, when level drive, they will write it on the card. They'll be showing me, Pastor, offering, offering. I said, ah, okay, <clears throat> yes. If you haven't given offering, just, you know what to do. And I, go, and I go out. Don't try to. It's running on revelation. It's running on revelation. It's running on revelation. It's running on revelation. You're quiet. Because you just lost one of your controls. One of your powerful controls of the pastor, you just lost it. Which is money. Hmm. Kaivanata. <laughs> know the person of Christ. Know the purpose of Christ. Know the ones that controls the provision. Know him. Know, know it. When you know this person that controls the provision. He said, when I sent you out, did you, with that post of script, he said, did you lack anything? They said nothing. Then you begin to understand something very powerful about God. Today, I want to quickly show you an example. Please, just give me five minutes. I'm going to just to carve it out from you. Acts 19, 13 to 16, just to show you something here. Quickly. You know, this is the story of an itinerant priest. You can go back home and read it. There were seven sons of Sceva, verse 14, a Jewish priest who also did so. They were trying to get out some demons from some people. But the evil spirits answered and said to them, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, who are you? Acts 19.15. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them. Please mark that those words. Overpowered them and prevailed against them. Anytime demonized people 
People functioning with demons seem to be prevailing against us. There is something we don't know. It's not like God is not answering the prayer. Then they fled out of the house. They were naked and they were wounded. Why? Let's, let's break it down quickly. Number one, these people we could call the sons of the Jewish high priest. They were deriving their authority from their position as the son of the chief priest. That's the problem right there. Witches are higher than the sons of the chief priest. That's not the position. That is what anything in the realm of the spirit. Please don't derive your authority from your position in church or from your title. I see people today, you know, particularly among African leaders. Africa is terrible when it comes to this. We are, we are the superstars when it comes to accumulating titles. Africa. And you know, Nigerians is come and gone in Nigeria. Nigeria is far better. Today now, in Christianity, is Ghanaians. Ghanaians. Pa- prophet, doctor, his majesty, this and that. For what? For this preaching again. How many microphones are you going to use? <laughs> Tell me how many microphones are you going to use? Prophet, doctor, are you going to use 60 microphones? For what? Preaching the same gospel? What is that? It's because you can't stand in the position God has put you in. That's why you need all these other titles to add to you. You say, oh, we're pastor it's because you, you are a PWP, you're PW, just PWA. I'm not just PWA, me to have doctorate. It's true. I have it. I have it. I have it. I have, it. I have a doctor of divinity. It's true, I have it. But that's not the issue. The, the, the demons don't recognize that. That was a recognition of service to humanity. Demons don't recognize that. You, don't you know I'm a doctor of divinity? What is that? They've eaten too many doctors of divinity. They've using them as dessert. Too many of them, they've eaten. What does that mean? In the realm of the spirit, it means nothing. Ah, don't you know I'm an area pastor? What does that mean? <laughs> then they'll kill you and bury you in the area. Then that's when you will know that the word principality means okay. That means the first one to move into the area. And you just became an area pastor seven years ago. What is that? The real area pastor is the principality. <laughs> you, you don't even know this. Listen to me. We are living in a place called, we are here in the church, in a place called Mississauga. And there's something called Kalasaga. What do you think those things mean? You think they're just all kind of like lovely names? Hmm. The center of commerce in Canada used to be here in this city. At the Credit River. Mississauga is the only place in this whole Canada where there are seven highways cross this place. Eh? So that means anywhere those demons are going, they must pass here first. <laughs> you don't even know. And you're living here. And some of you live by those highways. <laughs> That's why you hear things at night. <laughs> you don't know anything. Yeah! The largest airport is here. So the ones that don't even want to drive, they want to fly, they fly, they come here. Even if they're going to Montreal, they land here first. You say, I've entered. You don't even know. I have to study these things. So when, so when you're not landing the country, the government says, well, we have tried for you. When you're not in Ontario, you say, well, even with you, we're looking at it. You, it's yours to discover now. <laughs> they give you a license plate. You're discovering it. And you begin to understand. Can't you see those people, when they go to parliament, they put in all their feathers, they carry a pot with smoke, and somebody says, oh, man, it's kind of like just culture. It's just culture. And they, they spring the thing to you. And they the bloody smoke. And you, here you go. You say you go. <laughs> all this is your get All this is your He said, well, you know, what, what I just want to do, I kind of like, like traveling. I want to do 30 before 30. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with about 30 before 30. Do it. Just do it spiritually. Understand where you're going to. Don't just go to one cliff, take photograph. You're disturbing these demons. Where are they living? You're coming, you're coming, you're strange. And you're not paying homage to them. They told me this when I went to Masai Mara in Kenya. I told my guard, I said, I normally take walk. I said, I've been cramped here. I want to take a walk on Masai Mara. The, the, the Masai Mara guy, he looked at me. He said, in any direction you go here, if you last 20 minutes, he said, you can't see those lions and those wild beasts right now. He said, but they're there. He said, then he told me something that changed my, changed my mind, changed my life. He said, you look at this place and you think it's safari. You came in to come and look. He said, but this is the bedroom. Eh? <laughs> He said, so if they see you, you're trampling on the bedroom. He said, they need to see a massage. You know, the massage, they wear red. 
there. He said they need to see the Maasai red. The lions and the Maasai have been living together for thousands of years. They've had a covenant. They need to see the Maasai red to respect. He said, don't go. I said, All right, you don't need to pay. I said, I said it's okay. I don't know. It was only a joke. Don't you take jokes? It was only a joke. Go where? You go for all these things. You don't know. You're taking, you're taking, you know, you go to the river. You say, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe it. You put the leg in the river. You're disturbing the demons. They're trying to have a meeting. You're, you're, you're disturbing them. You're taking selfie. Then they say, who's, who's that? He says, one young girl from Toronto and her friends from New York. Ah, no respect, nothing. Ah, that whole thing is 26. Ah, we have been here for 2,600 years. Since God sent us down, ah, it's okay. You waste the smallest one. You need promotion, don't you? Go and deal with that one. You, 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 you don't know. Something has come. Near your car. This is a very intelligent. You're starting your car. You start your car, you start moving. Then you get to a place. The car is coming. Normally you've been driving, you're talking on the phone. And this time around, you try to move it, the steering is not moving. Eh? Ah, Jesus! Jesus, who sent you? <laughs> 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 you have to go there. What do you mean? What are you saying? <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, even in construction, people that do deep sea construction and all the piling and all this, they will tell you there are rivers that before they cross, they pay sacrifices. They consult. They tell you that this one, to build a bridge across this one, you have to pay respect. If not, you have to give one of your bosses. They will just die mysteriously. This is, you want to disturb them? You can't just do that. The sons of Skiba went to disturb them and they dealt with them. They said the same thing Paul was saying. But they were overpowered by the demons and they failed in their assignment. You're happy, it's conclusion. And this is the conclusion note. If the situation you're facing seems to be prevailing against you, it is time to grow in the knowledge of your authority. Don't say that. Don't say that. God did not answer you. It's not God that did not answer you. God has answered. You are operating with God based on God being the Father. He has answered you. You need to start learning to know who you are dealing with. I know who I believe. I'm, I know I can say what Paul said. I don't know it yet like Paul knew it, but I know who I believe. I know God. I don't know God, all of God. Nobody knows all of God. But I'm not a novice. I know the God I serve. There's the devil going to one witch is telling me, the witch tell me what? The witch, go and sit down. Go and sit down somewhere. What is it? What is, what is, who is talking? Who is talking? So I say, well, be careful because the witch is like, hear you. That's why I'm saying it. They can hear me. Let them hear me. They should be careful because I'm about to deal with them. You don't even know who you're sitting. But you need to know all these things. I went to Nigeria one time. This was many, many years ago. There was one, 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 one trou- tr- troublesome witch now reinforced, I said, brought a, another woman. It happened that something was going on, you know, in Topsis. They're doing a bit of a, uh, uh, an activity in the house. And this person has been estranged from the family long ago. And then, she, this was many years ago, about 15 years ago. And then she just suddenly showed up. And they came to tell them inside the house that a particular person is at the gate. This is in the city, city, Ikeja in Lagos, Nigeria. And suddenly there was a lot of panic, not from Topsy, but from a few elderly people in the house. They were panicking. So I, they, then they come to me, they were very distressed. Then they called me. I said, and I went to them and said, what is, what is going on? They said, oh, there's a particular woman, she's at the gate. We can't allow her to be, come inside. She's very, I said, is that all? I said, what if I go and tell her to go, to go away? They said, no. They said, no, no, no. I said, no, no, no. I said, sit down here. Please, everybody, I told all the elders, I said, please sit down here. I said, I'm going to the gate now. Fifteen years ago, this happened. I said, I'm going to the gate right now. I'm going to tell, tell her she should leave. I'm kicking her out of the place. That's what nonsense is that? And so as I was about to step, start going, a very elderly man laid prostrate on the ground for me. He said, ah, my son, ah, my son, hey, my son, don't go. I said, stand up. What do you mean, don't go? I respect you. I know at that time I was in, no, it was 15 years ago. I was 40 or so. I respect you. I know you're elderly. But the throne I'm sitting on that I'm going to use is older than you. I'm going to exercise something. 
Well, you, I know you are saying it out of a good heart. You want me to think she's going to kill me because you think I came from abroad. You don't know I came from above. <laughs> you think I'm English speaking? I'm not English speaking, I'm spirit speaking. The words that I speak, they're spirit and they're life. So as I was walking towards the gate, walking towards the gate, the woman started moving away, moving away, told her friend, let's go, let's go. Nobody has been able to chase her away. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And as I got to the gate, I, I still went, I still got outside. She, she, was, she was now on the corner of the street. And I said, okay, she's gone. She's like, Never to enter again. What is that? When my mom passed on, there were people that were doing things, cooking, you know, cooking constantly in the house. People are coming, going, going away. Then some of my siblings pointed to one woman. They said, we're not sure about her, the way she's been behaving. I said, hey, that's all. I said, yes. I said, is it only her? He says, so I said, call the woman for me. I called her. I said, hey, mama, come. She came. Two laps I took her to the gate of our house. I said, go on, take everything you carried, everything you brought here, carry it. She said, you can take it. I said, everything you brought, you can take it. She took it. I said, how much is your money? She told me, I give her, I give her more. I said, from this day, don't come into this compound. The day you step in this compound, you will die. I told her, I said, look at me very well. You will die. If you enter this compound again, you are dead. She said, thank you, my son. Off she goes. I'm not, I've not fasted, I've not prayed though. <laughs> it's because of where I'm seated. I know where I say, stand on your feet. What's giving you fear? This is not theory. That's what I'm trying to encourage you. It's not theory. It's not theoretical. This is real. You can't do this and talk and shout and behave the way I behave for 24 years and still be alive. They will have eaten you alive. You can't come here and be saying, to hell with all the witches. To hell with all the... You think they're not in Toronto? They might even be in this church right now. They know. The dead one said, they said, Paul, I know. They know we're not on the same level. You are not on the same level as them. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Somebody say, I'm not on the same level as them. <laughs> say it like you believe it. I'm not on the same level. <laughs> say it like you really believe it. I'm not on the same level. <laughs> you are not. You need to let this thing enter into you. You're not on the same level as that. Where's the fear? I'm giving you this assignment. I'm going to, I'm going to pray in a minute. I'm giving you this assignment. I'm going to leave this here. When we pray now, read the book of Ephesians and Colossians this week. There are only 10 chapters. Four in Colossians, six in Ephesians. This week, I know you've read this so many times. I'm going to pray for you right now that not only as you open the book, the book will be unsealed for you. Amen. You will see something that you have never seen before. Amen. And your confidence will come back. Amen. You will be able to speak to poverty and insufficiency. Amen. Pray that God will grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation. And you can say things. You can say things. It says that we're sons of Skiba. What does that mean? What does that mean? I'm the sons of Skiba. What does that mean? I have a title in the organization. What does that mean? That means nothing in the spirit realm. It's zero. What, mean, what happens in the spirit realm is light. What have you eaten? It is only light that darkness cannot comprehend. The only answer to darkness is light. Not title. Light. 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 And the Holy Spirit needs to open you up to this light. So when you see it, you are able to now, a table can now be set up for you in the presence of your enemies. You can now sit at my right hand and you can now rule in the midst of your enemy. It doesn't matter if 1,000 demonized people don't like you. It doesn't make a difference. You will rule in the midst of your enemies. Your children will rule in the midst of their enemies. I can hear you say a big Amen. I want to pray for somebody here today. I have an assignment from the Almighty God to pray for somebody here today that has been running. One of my sons came to me. He just came to me on the Sunday morning some months ago. He said, Pastor, Pastor, please, just pray for me. Pastor, and I've known him for some time, for some years. Pastor, just, just pray for me. Just right there. I said, okay. I didn't even ask. He said, I said, what about? He said, Pastor, I'm just going to just pray for me. I just laid my hands on him. And I just prayed, spoke in tongues and I prayed for him. Apparently, he's been going through demonic oppression night after night after night. There's this being, I know some of you don't believe this, but it's true. There's this being that will come into his room and just hold him down 
hold him down, almost like choking him. And he was saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And he's not able to get up. So I prayed for a simple prayer for him. So we had this men's meeting at Sheraton Hotel last year, December, right? He saw me at the, at the meeting and he walked up to me just, at, just this last December. And he said, Pastor, I want to share my testimony with you. Oh, I said, oh, what's up? Tell me. He said, you know, this thing, that's when he told me the story. He said, this thing used to come and hold me. He said, Bean, you just come and hold me. He said, on this occasion, after you prayed for me, he said, he now came. He think he came. He said, as he came, this time around, the same thing I was, I, but this time around, I, I saw that I had more energy. I was able to push back and I, I, I woke up. And, I, and I, as I woke up, before normally I was not able to do that. He said, I woke up and I stood up on my feet and I prayed. He said something to me that will sound strange to you. He said, but as I woke up and I said one or two words of prayer, he said, I had literally, I had footsteps. Then I had a bang. Boom. This is, don't forget this around 1 a.m., 2 a.m. I had a banging sound. Boom. On the car down on the, you know, in the driveway. And the alarm went off, went off on the car. So that's something physical. Like a thought, doom. Somebody like fell down, fell on it, and a, the alarm of the car went off. Weeks later, he got the call. Uh, the sister of the father had um, <coughs> shall we just say had been set on an errand. Do you understand? Let's go. Because came to accomplish an assignment, couldn't accomplish the assignment. Listen to me. You need, do you need some strength today? The things that have been chasing you that you're running away from, what for what? Why? To do what? To do what? It's time to confront it. You're going to speak with your authority. Lift those hands and thank him that you have your position in Christ. Come on, confess that position. I'm seated far above. I'm seated far above. Kabafano, Sevana, Subalava, Kevang, Gebatine. Come on, come on, come on. I'm seated far above. And no, 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 no. I'm not on the same level. No, Satan. I'm not on the same level as you, Satan. No way. I'm seated far above all principalities and powers, might and dominion, every name that is named, not only in this age, but even in that which is to come. Yes, I was raised up with him. I'm seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of God, above all principalities and powers, absolutely, as a child of the most high God. No doubt. I declare my position in Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Come on, are you ready to confront some things? Come on, are you ready to confront some things? First thing I want you to confront today, we're destroying the works of the devil. Every oppression concerning you or your children, come on, speak to it right now. You oppressor, you must go. I take authority over every demonic oppression concerning my life. I rebuke it today in Jesus' name. Come on, open your mouth now. No, you can't oppress me. I'm too low. I'm higher than you in Christ Jesus. I exercise my authority in Christ and against every demonic oppression concerning my children. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. I rebuke it. Open your mouth. Come on now. Exercise your authority in Christ. You are far above. You are far above. Speak to it now. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's only one more minute. One more minute. One more minute. Speak to it. Prade mafate fele gaba. Skota pele fele kaba. Shubagade matoto male. You foul devils that want to oppress me, oppress my wife, oppress my ministry, oppress my children. I rebuke you in Jesus' name. Get out! Thank you, Lord. Glory to your name. I particularly listen very carefully to me by the prompt of the Holy Spirit. I know we've taken enough time, and God bless you. I appreciate your staying with us, those online and those in there. But if you have to, if you have an appointment that you have to particularly rush, it go away. Please, you can excuse yourself. Please, you have my permission. No. No holds bad. Don't feel condemned. If you have an appointment and you have to go, please do go. I particularly want to take two minutes to pray against witchcraft. And we're going to do that again at 6 p.m. today, Eastern Standard Time. Please join us. We're going to take, take charge over this foul thing called witchcraft. You are here right now. It's time to pray. Losing yourself. I know it's a Sunday morning, but we're fasting. And I know we have visitors in the house. Pardon us, please. Normally, we are a clergy church, ecclesiastical, all packaged, all looking good. But we're going to deal with stuff. 
I said, we have to deal with stuff. I have to deal with stuff. You have to deal with witchcraft. Every power of witchcraft that has been at work concerning my life or my children, I take authority over it today. I'm seated in Christ Jesus. I destroy it. I destroy it in Jesus' name. I exercise my authority in Christ. I destroy it. Destroy it. Destroy it in Jesus' name. Feka, Fenaga, Fera, Sevia, Geva, Gevara, Gobana, Grete Malamaya. Power of witchcraft. No. Walla, no. Get out. I break the hall of witchcraft. Pavana de Lebosa, Epake Metebeleve, Isifra, Satoma Lava. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Break the power of witchcraft. Come on, come against it. Destroy it now. You have one minute. Online family. Come on, come on. House of praise. Open your mouth. Saba, Kepaketeneya. I destroy the power of witchcraft that have come against my children. We destroy in Jesus' name. Pale prefete. Pirama Mabuji, Satan Maba, Ulua Sebe, Kibandia, Ruka de Mala, Ubune, 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 Shibian Delivara, Sabata. Come on, thank you, Lord. Thirty seconds more. Come on, quickly. Step upon the serpents and the scorpions and all the powers of the enemy. Arrayed against my son, arrayed against my daughter, arrayed against my wife, arrayed against me, I destroy them today in the name of Jesus. 30 seconds more. Come on, open that mouth. Open that mouth. Pray. Of this is church, we're destroying the works of the devil. If you have ever had any oppression of the devil, you feel something pressing you down, you know something comes, is pressing you down. Run down here right now. I want to pray for you. You're going to be delivered right now. Come here now, come here now, right now, right now, right now, right now. You feel you've been oppressed. Something is oppressing. Look at that. 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 You see that? Look at that. Look at that. Father, I want to thank you and honor you, O oh God, for your word. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free. The woman with the Son of God says, free is free indeed. Thank you for the light of your word, O oh Lord. I lift now, lift, open your hands and lift your hands. I pray for each and every one of those ones here today. I exercise authority in Christ Jesus today. Every oppressor that comes against you to repress you, to push down your destiny, power of witchcraft at work against you. I stand in the authority of Christ today. I rebuke the oppressor in Jesus' name. Every witch, wizard, warlock, every power of the occult working against you, holding down your destiny, repressing you at night. In the day, I stand in authority in Christ today. In the name of Jesus, above every name, I break that oppression. In the name of Jesus, I break that oppression. I break that oppression. I break that oppression. I speak directly to you foul spirits of the oppressor that come against them. I say you have no right over these ones. In time past, they might have been ignorant, not having the light of the war, but you have no right they have run under to take refuge under the wings of the almighty God here. Therefore, I take authority over you on foul spirits wherever you're coming from. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Lose your hold on them in Jesus' name. Lose your hold on their destiny. Lose your hold on their destiny. Lose your hold on their destiny. 
from here today, I speak strength into you. I speak strength into you. I speak strength into you. Where you lack strength, I speak strength into you. Particularly, I speak strength into your prayer life. I speak strength into your prayer life. I speak fire into your prayer life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name. For everybody, please, wherever you are, lift up your hands. Everybody, I want to pray for you. What you moved before that refused to move. I stand in the authority of Christ. There's nothing that Christ cannot move. I command it now to move in Jesus' name. Unemployment, move in Jesus' name. Unemployment, move in Jesus' name. Misfortune, move. Barrenness, move. Sickness, move. Insufficiency, move. Delay of the realization of marital destiny, move in Jesus' name. I stand as one sent by the Almighty God today. In the name of Jesus, the Christ that sent me, the one that died on the third day, triumphantly rose from the dead. He's seated at the right hand of God, the Father, right now. He sent me. I speak to you in his name. Wherever you need to shift to, to be positioned to, to make things work for you as ordained by God. Today, by prophecy, I shift you there in Jesus' name. Ah, by the prophetic word today, I shift you there. Wherever you need to be positioned for favor to reach you. By prophecy today, I shift you to that red. I shift you to that space. I shift you to that space. Somebody is here. When you heard me speaking about money, you said to yourself, Oh my God, can people really talk like this? In the name of Jesus Christ. And you're going through challenges financially. I speak over you today. Ah! You will not lack. You will not know lack. You will not know lack. Listen to me. Today, your days of lack, today, I declare them over. I didn't hear you. Your days of lack, I declare them over from today. Listen. God showed me something about a young man, a man, a woman. She started, she's crying, crying. And I asked her, what happened? He said, it's my husband. They just told me he died. Listen, I'm praying here now for every person that is married, every married man under the authority of my voice. Every married man under the authority of my voice. Everything Satan has put in place to bring untimely death to you. I stand in the name of he that conquered death today by his authority. I cancel it in Jesus' name. I cancel it in Jesus' name. You will not die but live. Wherever is an agent of darkness practicing necromancy that has sent that spirit of death, unleashed that spirit of death against you. Today, Whoever digs a pit shall fall into it. He that rolls a stone shall have you roll back on them. May that spirit they've unleashed against you go back to where it's coming from. But you, many, many years, if Jesus starts, you will still be serving God. You will not spend your days in sickness. You won't spend it in sorrow. You won't spend it in regret. You won't spend it in trouble. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's somebody here, they are threatening to foreclose your house. It is written, you shall not bid for another to inhabit. You shall not plan for another to eat. Therefore, therefore, that case, no matter how long it has gone, you know, the Spirit gave back to the natural. I speak from the realm of the Spirit. May that case collapse. Whether it's going to collapse on the technicality or it's going to collapse based on the fact or collapse based on the law, whatever it's going to be, may that case collapse now. God spoke to me, no matter how far gone it is, there is no law that can cancel the promise of God. No law. Galatians 3, verse 16 and 17. There is no law that can ever cancel the promise that God gave to Abraham. Therefore, the promise God gave you is that you will be blessed and be a blessing. 
whatever anybody that is here, any law, whether it's immigration law, whatever law, policy, procedure, anything by law that is now hindering your destiny, today, on the authority of God's word, we supersede it. Receive the favor that will supersede it. Right now, receive that favor in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. By Sunday, many of you that are here, you're coming back rejoicing. You're coming back shouting for joy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give him a shout. Give him a shout of victory. A shout of triumph. A shout of victory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Shake hands with two or three people and let them know I will celebrate at the end. And you will celebrate at the end. And just take your seat for one minute. Just take your seat for one minute. Thank you. I will celebrate at the end. Just take your seat for one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's, uh, uh, to receive our tithes and our offerings this morning. For those who are members of the church, you know exactly what to do. Begin to package that together. On behalf of those who are attending for the very first time, uh, allow me to share with you uh, our process. So if you're online, please, um, there's information popping up on your device uh, that would tell you exactly what to do. If you are in person, they should, have, they should be up behind me now. Three ways uh, we have to do so. You can use the text to give phone number. It's on the screen. You can also use the app uh, if you have that already. And if you don't, you can also give by Interact. So the email address is finance at houseofpraise.ca. Uh, if you end up using the Interact, please include your full name uh, when you send in your tithes and your offering. So we do that. We we'll rise up. We we'll receive heart and soul as we rejoice. If you are glad you showed up to church today, shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, shall we rise? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> we give you glory. Thank you for what you have done in our midst today. We are grateful because we know our lives will never be the same. The inevitably, inevitability of our celebration, we say thank you. Lord, Pastor has already spoken over us. So any devourer anywhere concerning our finances is completely and totally subdued in Jesus' name. We command you from the place of superior authority. Loose your hold in the name of Jesus. We give you glory. Come on, let's give rejoicing. Come on, if you got the breath of God inside of you, I want you to clap those hands and give God a shout of praise. Come on, I said a shout of praise, not a whisper. Give God a shout of praise, amen. Well, I got good news for someone today. The fact that you're alive means God is not done with you yet. You have a wonderful future with a happy ending, amen. All right, hey.
necessary for heart and soul. Glory to God. I will celebrate in the end. Come on, one more time. I will celebrate in the end. God bless you. 6 p.m. Meet you online. We're going to have communion. Don't forget. Please register for BL. Man, God bless you. Please volunteer. God bless you.